What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Group D of the GSL Code S. Uh, after, after tonight, we're going to be moving on to the round of eight. We've got uh, two Terrans and two Protosses. No Zerks today. Yeah, no um, Zerks today. Two Zerks in the round of eight. Depending on how things go, possibly... Uh, no Protoss is in the round of eight if we don't get a Protoss surviving here tonight. Yeah, so far, I mean, two Zergs and then nothing but Terrans advancing to the round of eight. So I'm hoping that someone between, you know, Creator and Classic will find some magic stuff and give us some Protoss hope here in the round of eight. Yeah, like, I think we're going to get at least one Protoss to advance. The thing is, yeah. Bunny seems to be in such great shape today. I can't imagine him not getting out of the group. I think he's a shoe in uh, Innovation, I've, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, I've got more questions than answers. We're just going to have to see what kind of shape he's in. We saw stats just the other day uh, absolutely get crushed. Uh, not in the right shape to be, I guess, competitive here in the GSL. Not the same stats we knew from years past before his military service. Um, and so that does make me a little bit uh, worried here for innovation, but it uh, should be a good day. I'm excited to get this started. It should be a lot of fun, and it's good having stats and innovation come back to the GSL, even if they're not exactly ready to compete at the top 16 level. Yeah. I mean, maybe innovation's going to surprise us, but I think generally speaking, there's kind of an adjustment period. You can't all just be hero and come flying uh, yeah. <laughs> out of the gates and just blow up the competition in a storm. I was going to say, yeah, unless you're hero. Uh, you're probably not going to just come back to GSL and kill. So the GSL, uh, it, now we are asking for your support on Patreon. You can go mm -hmm. to the patreon.com forward slash GSL. Uh, you can also support GSL on, uh, uh, how do I say this, using the Star Balloons on Afrika TV. Uh, you can see their various tiers. Uh, all of this prize money will go, I'm sorry, all this donation money will go to the prize pool is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, up to $30,000 for this season, and then anything in excess of that will go into the prize pool for the next it'll, season. Yeah, it'll roll over to the next GSL. season. And um, yeah, main, main tier that I'm looking at here, just as a StarCraft fan on a budget, Code A+, plus, match <laughs> replays, $10. Those rewards go out on Monday. So far, almost $15,000 raised. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, the support sure. the support is appreciated. I mean, we don't have the same publisher support that we had in years past. And, you know, this is actually the way that everything is kind of going now is, you know, we go, we go reach out to the individuals, get that support. Um, and so, yeah, check it out. We appreciate it. And uh, in a little bit here, we're going to get started on these games. Again, um, we, we started out with almost no Zergs in this, uh, in this GSL. Uh, we have two Zergs that have advanced. Yeah, two out of three, not bad. The rest are Terran and then no Protoss. So uh, it, it's very possible we're going to have a lot of TVTs coming up here. Although sometimes we do have tournaments where, like we just had this recently in ASL, where it was like uh, we had like five of the top eight were all Zergs. And then it was like even then we still managed to only have one Zerg in the final four. That can happen. So um, this is what it's looking like right now. Four Protoss, uh, sorry, four Terrans, excuse me, zero Protoss and two Zergs. Yeah, but hopefully in Group D, one of these Protoss players will be able to make it to the round of eight between Creator and Classic, but they will have formidable competition to get there with Innovation making his return here to the GSL Code S, as well as Bunny, who has just been, you know, one of the best Terran players in the world for, you know, quietly what feels like a very long time. Yeah, Classic is now back playing StarCraft II. He has also finished up his military service. He has also not looked as great as uh, he has in the past, so... Uh, it'll be interesting to see how he how he performs here now. We did have Creator at a GSL Finals not long ago. Um, he still is trying to win that GSL Code S. Um, look what may be the last year for us here. Uh, maybe this will be the time he can finally do it. Yeah, would be good to see. He had a good performance at IM Kadaviche, which yeah. hopefully he could build on here in 2023. And uh, he'll be the first uh, first Protoss player going up in match number one here in Group D. Is I can't wait to get started, Tazeless Man. I'm yeah, loving TVP. I mean, it's not very, it, it feels a little scary for Protoss right now. I don't want to say it's imbalanced, but it feels like the meta is well, kind of in a position where there's a lot of dangerous timings you got to wor worry about as the toss player, but it's still one of my favorite matchups to watch. It's so enjoyable. I feel like there's so many different ways it can go in terms of the attacks that Terran can throw at you or the ways that Protoss can also approach. Sure. With some yeah. cheesy plays, some aggressive plays, some macro oriented plays, and. Now, Creator is one of those players that over the past couple of years has really defined himself as a Protoss with a wide range of potential strategies. He's, he's got a lot of builds, yeah, a lot, lot of different approaches here. Tool belt. He has his phone propped up. Uh, I guess he's recording himself with his phone? Yeah, it looks like it. Huh. huh. Maybe something for social media there. Looks like he has an exercise bike in the background as well. Got to stay fit. Oh, is that an exercise I bike? I think it's an exercise. I think it, yeah, it might be. I think. Now, over here, let's judge his room. <laughs> 
blotting out the sun. A true right, gamer. A true gamer right there. Get this sunlight out of my room. Yeah. Of course, one of the best Terran players in the world, if not one of the best players in the world for a very long time. Yeah, one of the most iconic Terrans uh, you know, known for um, j just incredible mechanical play. Uh, predictable, but it doesn't matter. Just a machine. J yeah, just an absolute machine. Uh, I don't know what kind of shape he's in. As you can see, he has not been playing in the last uh, series of events that we've had um, as he's just gotten back. So, I, you know, I, I don't know what to expect, but uh, fingers crossed, you know, it would be very fun to have Innovation come back and go deep into GSL once more. It's easy to forget. Yeah, three first places. Yeah, Innovation's yeah. really good. And even now, I mean, he's only been competing again in StarCraft II tournaments since coming back from military service for about two right. months. But... He beat Ragnarok to qualify for GSL Code S, and Ragnarok yeah. made some crazy deep runs last year. Yeah, Ragnarok, I mean, for a little bit last year, it looked like he might suddenly become the guy. Um, and so the fact that Innovation did that, that's kind of wild. I mean, who knows? Maybe Innovation plays extremely well and just escapes this group and uh, crushes the dreams of all the Protoss players that are hoping for. Uh, <laughs> crushes you know, my some, dreams as some well. Some Protoss <laughs> representation here in the round of eight. Um, all right, we're ready to get into this. It is going to be a best of three classic GSL group format uh, that we've all been used to, which is this time the players are playing from home. We're going to go to the map Dragon Scales here for map one, creator versus innovation. The winner goes on to the winner's match, the loser the loser's match uh, as we start group D here in the GSL Code S. Club NV, creator. Innovation. Always good having gamers return back to the GSL. Yeah, we're lucky that we don't have to. Um, we don't have to do a military service. That's a. <laughs> yeah, we are very we are lucky. Very, most people watch this don't, but I mean, it's a, it's a pretty big commitment to have to give up. I think it's about 18 months, two years uh, of your life, and. Um, some of you guys might be asking, well, can't they still play while they're in the military? Well, yeah, no one could stop you from playing a computer game, but um, you can't earn an income mm. on top of anything else when you're in the military. I think you're paid like a very small amount. Actually. I wasn't aware of that rule, actually. Yeah, so oh. you're, you're not allowed to like, um, I, I, I guess, you know, uh, stream and, 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 and get donations there or, or compete and win a prize pool. Um, I think it also depends on, you know, what job that you have in the military. If you're doing something that's going to be you there day in and day out, probably won't have time to play StarCraft 2, but maybe if you get more of a civilian role there, doing logistics or something, you might get some more time to practice, but... Yeah, yeah, you can play and practice, you just can't compete. So we have a lot of guys that just take time off and, and, and focus on other stuff um, in the meanwhile. So uh, in this game, we've got Creator going for a very quick expand here on the low ground and expand before even uh, Adept or anything else Stalker has been made. Yeah. Uh, which is fine. I don't think there's going to be much that uh, innovation can do about this. No, just a standard 20 Nexus opening here for Creator. And once that Cybernetics core will, comes down, we'll see if he opts to go for most likely going to be either Blink or Stargate as actually this probe probing around. I wonder if this is for a proxy or if he's... I think he's just scouting, actually. I think he just wants to make sure there's no hidden buildings here. Yeah. Didn't scout a command center here for innovation. Of course, yeah. that 2 depot wall often signals one base aggression or at least one base tech. So Creator just playing it safe, trying to gather some intel on the map. This Reaper will come in now and see what Creator is cooking back at home. Innovation um, is starting his uh, second command center. Looks like this Reaper is going to get a decent amount of damage here, at least kill one probe. Obviously, the, Re uh, the Reaper can um, outrun uh, the Adept. Oh, oh but he actually like is going to get caught, I think. Oh. oh, what? Barely missed that one, but once the Shade completes, doesn't even yeah. need it, in fact, as the second Adept com finishes and... Uh, that's going to be Twilight Council here for Creator, and he still doesn't know exactly what the game plan is for Innovation, because, of course, that CC is on the high ground. He has a probe here in the natural, so he probably is figuring it's going to be an expand because of the Reaper, but he doesn't know what variant of higher tech aggression is going to come with that expansion. And uh, actually, Innovation kind of going for a little bit of an older play. Not that that's bad, but um, he is going to be going for a very quick uh, Widow Mine drop with some Marines there as well. He does see the Command Center. I think it's safe to say Creator is uh, slightly ahead here, but we have to see if the drop does any actual damage. Ooh, We've got a Robo Bay and a Dark Shrine coming here. 
Yeah, Dark Shrine. Actually, we haven't seen a lot of DT drops here from Protoss players in this matchup so far here in GSL. Yeah, it seems to be a pretty popular thing to do. Uh, we've got two more gateways coming down. And I like the pylon outside, uh, where you're, you're going to have to kill that if you want to land that. And he's got two adepts that could come up here and basically kill these marines. Exactly. Yeah, three adepts, in fact, in completion in total. We'll see if he brings all three of them here to the front, because this could be a bit of a problem. It might delay this expansion here for innovation, as that medevac with three widow mines is moving out on the map. One adept will get cleaned up. Yeah, and he can't really mine with these SCVs until the pylon's killed, so I think he's just trying to be as much of a nuisance as possible, even hitting these SCVs. <laughs> he drops a cybernetic score. That's so funny. I almost didn't understand what was happening there. Yeah, just and he to, cancels it. <laughs> just to buy a little bit of extra time. Now, the question uh -huh. is, is Creator watching? Because you can lose all your workers in the blink of an eye, and he pulls uh, away um, most of them. Yeah, not a lot of gateway units back at home, though, so this is going to be a lot of lost mining time. He had a lot of probes going down. Four in total so far will be five after that last shot, and with two widow mines also getting away in this medevac to the back of Creator's base, it's it's not the best situation. Generally, as Protoss with Chrono Boost, you want to be ahead in workers, especially against a Terran who you know went factory before CC, right? Right. But instead, it's actually 34 SCVs to 32 probes, so we'll see if this DT drop is going to be able to get enough damage to bring Creator back into this. There is a Raven here. Yeah, having the Raven basically makes the DT drop useless. You know, you don't, Terra doesn't have to give anything up to see it, like the scan. I guess you can use the scan over here if the Raven's not there, but you get the idea. Um, so he'll probably have to recall this warp prison back. It's gonna be stuck up there otherwise. Yeah, only a couple of SCV kills, five in total, but you know, tit for tat at least. Creator does retake that worker lead, which he does need, and opting for DT Blink as well. So some interesting tech choices coming out of Creator here in game number one. Yeah, DT Blink I wasn't expecting. I was not shocked to see the DTs, but yeah. I'm curious about getting Blink this early. I always felt like Blink was more of an end game thing in this matchup, but let's see what he's got planned. Um, Innovation is staying back. He's powered up. He's got a lot more um, uh, barracks finishing. He's going to have a, a, a real... A powerful engine to produce a lot. Uh, we don't see a third command center, so uh, either Terran has to attack or expand much later. On the Protoss' side of things, we have the third Nexus coming down, uh, and that DT Blink is about halfway done. And surprisingly, no other techs coming out of that Twilight Council just yet. I was expecting to see either Charge or Blink get researched, so there might be a window here for innovation, as, okay, Blink now finally gets started and gets Chrono boosted, so Creator's gonna try and rush that out. But yeah, Soccer Blink uh, after DT Blink. Yeah. Kind of funny to even all the blinks. say it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> all the Blink upgrades are coming here, but that's funny he's going to get that one that quickly here. Well, you can do some pretty cute micro, though, with the Warp Prism and DTs with Blink. I mean, it's almost... Yeah. It's a, it's a lot of potential value you can find. The question is whether Innovation's going to be prepared for it back at home, as he actually does have a Viking there in the main base, coupled with the Raven. So this Warp Prism... If it does decide to go into the main base and try to make something happen, might get shut down very quickly. That's so many DTs, 60 DTs, yeah. in fact. Yeah, I mean, he's very deliberately been making a lot of DTs. I guess if a push comes out, he can just blink right up into the main and just start Ooh. to kill stuff. And the Raven's going cross map, too. I think he wants to drop turrets on that third base. So this might open an avenue of attack here for Creator if he catches wind. Yeah, I mean, keep in mind, like, Especially if he's not paying attention, those DTs can all come in there and one hit six, you know, or seven SCVs. And, you know, how quickly is everything going to fall apart then? I like the War Prism out here to spot, <laughs> just kind of getting value with this thing. That's basically an observer at this point. Yeah, it's like uh, not bad at all. Now, here comes the uh, the Raven. He is uh, firing at the back. Yeah, only three Stalkers not going to be able to clean this one up in time. So one Widow Mine will drop, gets two probe kills, but that's an even trade for Creator thus far. Turrets. Drop as well, and that's going to be the cue for Creator now to come into the main base and try and find some damage. There are scans oh. banked up, but this is 60 Ts. Yeah, I mean, this is just so much damage coming right out, right away. That's already 14 uh, workers yeah. killed. And, you know, he scans and he's like, oh, I don't even have enough to fight that. That's actually so many DTs. This is cool. Crazy. Oh, he's going to get, okay, concussive shell. I got a little excited there. I wasn't <laughs> sure where the upgrade was at first. Like, oh, my God. Tazes, imagine getting stim or something with this, but no. Okay, so the push is going to come down here. I'm a little bit worried Terran might just have enough to win the fight. He's going to morph possible. three Archons here. Oh, no, I think he recalled with a third Nexus, and then it died. So the recall got canceled. I think that's what just went down oh. there. So these Archons are going to die in the main base now of Innovation. And Innovation 
Stimming a win here. Natural expansion, no more force fields left in the bag. Battery overcharge will come down, but this is a formidable force here at the natural expansion of Creator. As he might have overcommitted just a little bit there with the DTs, but that's a lot of gateway units. Yeah, he's going to take out the, the pylon. Uh, less production now as two of those gateways are, are gone. Big um, supply block. Yeah, I mean, uh, is he going to... Okay, Innovation is going to commit further. He just wants to get these tanks in range of the next and kind of force them to come out. He's going to chuck down some auto turrets as well. I think Innovation might have this game state. He might. There's very little front line here for these Stalkers and Immortals, so this is a tough position to be in with those siege tanks just continuously shelling, and that's going to be it. Innovation takes game number one. I like the build that we saw out of Creator, the 60 T's coming into the main base. I really like that idea. I wonder if he would have been able to defend if he had a recall available, not at that third Nexus. If he was able to get those Archons out of the main base of Innovation, yeah. maybe he can defend his natural and the game doesn't end right there. But I mean, that's one of those scary things when you go for builds like this as Protoss is if Terran hits a really tight two base timing with Widow Mines, with Siege Tanks, with a ton of stimmed bio. Yeah. It's hard to actually break that position, especially if you don't have charge. Because remember, he delayed Stalker Blink because he got DT Blink so quickly. Charge had only just started when Innovation was sieging the natural ramp yeah. for Protoss, so it was not an ideal situation. But you know, Innovation showing some life here, winning a game. I mean, it was it was uh, it's kind of a funny game, right? Because I'm sure Innovation was not prepared for the the, oh, the no. six or seven DTs that come up into the main. But at the same time, it's like. I think there's a reason why we don't see this more often. It seems like it's a little bit lopsided, like the idea is cool. It's probably great if the Terran tries to come back home and defend because then you blink back out. Yeah, or if Terran goes for a third command center, doesn't have you know yeah. quite as much oomph behind that push, then you know maybe then you're recalling back those three Archons and you actually just stomp it, you rebuild your third Nexus in your right. head. Because that was a lot of SCVs that went down. I feel like it was like 20 or more almost. Yeah. It was a ton. Yeah, it was... Uh I don't know. I would like to see a little bit more of that. I'm not sure exactly what to make of it, but uh, we're going to go to Grasman for map number two. Innovation kind of always looking looking the same, whether he's won or lost. Yeah, I was going to say, if he had lost, he would look the yeah, exact same exactly way, man. like that. Um, Creator going to try to get his head back in the game here. Yeah. Frustrating loss, honestly. Um, a little bit, especially with that recall there on the Archon, not having yeah. enough to defend the natural expansion. But well, right. let's see if Creator is able to bring it back here. Innovation up 1-0 as we, we move on to Gresvin. Creator looking to get on the board. Club NV, Creator. Yeah, it's a phone filming him. It's a high quality webcam. Yeah. You can see everything. <laughs> Innovation. Invasion. I would like him to use that plug at the top for something. <laughs> what would you plug into that thing at the top? I feel like that's for an air conditioning unit. But... Oh, you're probably right. I was just looking at that. I'm like, what would you like? You have like a surge protector like hanging off the wall <laughs> with your phone charger in there? I was like, what is, you like a three what is meter going on your phone charger? You're totally cable? right. That's to install an air conditioner. You're 100% right. Yeah, but if he doesn't have an air conditioner yet, man, I'm worried. It's starting to get kind of hot getting here hot. in Seoul. Yeah. And today the weather was not, it's a little bit. Rainy, a little bit cloudy, some overcast here, but Dude, the, the humidity in Seoul in the summer. Yeah, people don't know about this about Korea, but it feels like, I mean, I've been to Orlando, Florida for, I think it was like an MLG or something way back in the day. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm from California, which, like, it's hot, but it's dry. It's and that just was, said, you know, California's got great weather, yeah, generally that, speaking. Moving to, we're going to Florida was, like, the first time I actually got, like, smacked in the face by this humidity. I'm like, oh, my God, I feel like I'm in a swamp. This yeah. is a new experience for me. And now it's just every summer in Korea. We actually have to go Korean this. summers get so hot and it's so muggy out that the only thing you can do is leave your air conditioner on all day, which mm -hmm. is expensive, and then play games. Yeah, which is also underwear. expensive in our yeah. with our gaming PCs with all, right, the, yes. all the RGB lights That's going right. off and everything, all the bells and whistles. I, I yeah, when it gets that hot in the summer here, it's like I won't go out until it's the evening time. Yeah, I just can't. I can't eat that much heat. Dude, even in the winter, I barely need to run like my own door, like my, my floor heating because my computer just like runs so hot oh, when yeah. I play like yeah. any any game more or less, and so it just compounds the problem there in summer where it's like okay. I guess we really yeah. need to run this air conditioner 24-7. If, if you're going to come to, to Korea, don't come, like, in the in the dead center of summer. It's, to it's going to be rough. Try yeah. to time the spring. Spring is a time to visit for sure. Fall is also beautiful, but we have uh, the mosquitoes are still alive. Yeah, that's fall, right. And that's 
all it takes is one mosquito to get in my apartment. And I'm like, now it's going to be day. weeks of this. Yeah, just <laughs> there's one like glass of water somewhere that I left that becomes the breeding ground for the mosquito. Then, it, you know, it's just them eating me all night. It's terrible. All right. Well, we have a similar build coming out of Creator, adapted into Twilight Council yet again. This uh, Reaver for Innovation is not going to get the full scout off as it actually had to spend a little bit of time back in Innovation's base cleaning up that probe. So Innovation, as of yet, in the dark as to exactly what Creator's plan is. And we'll see if he decides to go into Blink this time or if he opts for Dark Shrine again. And actually a couple of Reapers coming in. I did not catch this. Oh, this might be some uh, some probe kills, Tasteless. Yeah, somehow that one probe doesn't actually get uh, taken out there. A little bit of missed micro there by Innovation, not able to get that probe. Does get one here in the main base. Should get a couple more, you would think, is actually have some probes getting pulled here to the main base. So something's going on with the natural. This Reaper does get cleaned up. Two probes down in total. It's a lot of lost mining time. And also two probes going down early. Oh, is the Hellion. Yeah, the Hellion going to come in. Doesn't look like it's going to get very much done. It will be chased out by that Stalker. Uh, and the build that Creator's going for this time around is a much more standard build. Um, Innovation, I think, is literally doing the same build again. But um, just getting Stalker, Blink, and trying to play a defensive game, probably getting a third base set up a little bit later on uh, and taking the game from there. Yeah, and I, I like this opening, especially against what Innovation is uh, Innovation is going for. I mean, if Terran's opting to make, you know, Widow Mines and Hellions and Marines, those are units that Blink Stalkers early on fare very well against. You can get a lot of value out of microing them if you decide to get aggressive with a three or four gate Blink and a later third base. Yeah. So we'll see what avenue Creator likes to take here. He is going for two more gateways and a robotics facility before that third Nexus, so he might decide to play this a little bit aggressively, but it's not, you know, that hyper hyper aggro four gate blink that we often saw right yeah that was very popular like two years ago um where you just try to run inside and blink in there uh these widow mines are going to burrow a couple more probe kills yeah you know so far uh not bad um you know it's gonna be a lot harder to pull that off when blink is done but you'll take whatever kills you can get there is another warp prism starting by the way which is not um oh i'm sorry never mind yeah no, this, this is uh this is fine so the War Prism is going to be coming out here. He may have some opportunities to put some pressure on. Huh. Two more Gas Geysers before taking a third base here for Creator. So I'm wondering if he wants to add another tech in to the mix. I, I, Could think, be. I think you generally only need about three gases for just massing Blink Stalkers, right? So this gas, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go somewhere. We'll see where he decides to put it in. Wow. Hold on a second. Oh, this might be so sick. Oh, oh he saw it, but... <laughs> A little bit indecisive there. Yeah, he was like over that like kind of high ground corner. Mm -hmm. um, that's wild. You know th that you know may just take the wind out of his sails entirely because like how are you going to be aggressive with a war prison when it's at you know in the red? Ooh, Templar archives into third nexus. I like this. A little bit of a mix up here for Creator. Yeah, I guess that's he just fun. wants to try to rush into Psy Storm. So then if the push comes, he just you know flattens it with Psy Storm and the game goes on. Yeah, I would love if we just stayed on the production tab for a little bit here because I want to see the timing for Charge and potentially a Forge to see you know, what combination he's going to go with. And yeah, it's just going to be straight up, straight up Storm. So now going back to that Widow Mine hitting the Warp Prism there in the middle of the map, that actually starts to impact things a little bit more than I was anticipating because, you know, the, the, the Warp Prism is going to be the shuttle that is going to be controlling those Templars pretty much throughout the mid-game. Yeah, and so. They get like 10% of HP. I mean, of course, as shields, they do regenerate, but... And whenever that happens to me, I'm like, am I just supposed to make another Warp Prism here? <laughs> like, should I just, like, get rid of this one and just make a new one? Like, I'm bad enough that I would. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, like, have one camped in by the Terran's base, the one with low HP, be like, okay, at some point, I'll just use this to warp in, like, yeah. five charged elements yeah, and, like, exactly. cause some problems. Yeah. And then give myself a little bit of a buffer here with these uh, these Psy Storms, but... We've got the third commands that are starting. Yeah, third CC here for innovation. Charge now underway for creator. So T Terran generally lags behind a little bit in expansions in this matchup, but um, you know, overall you want to try to stay even in matchups. And I, I don't know that this is a push. This looks like he just wants to try to come out here and, and secure the position of the third. But maybe he'll push too. Stim isn't that far off either. I think he might with how delayed this third base is. I I would be surprised if innovation didn't try to exert at least a little bit of pressure here, especially with creator now going for what might be a fourth base. 
Those minerals adding up, but with this push coming across the map, I wouldn't be surprised if he decided to put that thought on hold. Is actually hold that thought, and this storm comes yeah. in. Innovation with a fast reaction, not too much damage. Auto turrets drop now into the third base, and soon the natural here for Protoss will cause a little bit more chaos. Yeah, just being a little bit annoying right now. Uh, but Terran is still intent on pushing. Now, I feel like Protoss does have the answer, but this will also come down to execution. Like, can he make those storms actually land perfectly uh, on their targets? It's a lot of Marines. I'm worried about that Warp Prism, Tasteless. This can go really bad really quickly. And actually, Innovation going straight to the main base. There's nothing here to defend. So these Siege Tanks, they will drop, and they will be able to Siege up. And actually, the Widow Mine's coming oh back God, into play, this is too. Wild. He's going to Siege up right over here. All right. Storms beautifully coming down on the Terran army. Oh, man. Completely destroying that. Yeah, that backfired. I think a little bit too deep there. That recall coming in. One of the benefits of recalling in a situation like that is that all those units, they're going to spawn kind of in a circle around the Nexus. They're not right. going to clump up. So then those siege tanks, they're not going to get the best hits. And also, it's really hard in the moment to find a clump of, you know, stalkers or something that you want to focus down. So right. Crater coming in with Storm with a nice surround there from that. And Innovation, he's just going to go also, in again. He's recalling the, the Templars right in there, right? So yeah. it's, it's not even like he's like having to um, work that hard. I don't uh, think Crater's to, anticipating this, though. Yeah, this was uh, kind of a crazy move. Certainly unexpected. Um, and these Zealots, I mean, the warping of Zealots is not going to quite be enough. And so Crater's going to have to take his pretty slow, clunky army all the way back here. Now, the Psy Storm drops are good. You can see that Protoss has to work a lot harder if they're going to try to like hit a position by dropping the storms mm -hmm. in versus just like recalling that you storm whatever is the biggest clump of Terran units you can see. Um, Innovation's actually getting a considerably bigger army, even though we're seeing Creator fight him off pretty well. Yeah, I feel like the first trade there for Creator went quite well, but Innovation just with some six, six star sense coming back with those three medevac drops and uh, picking up. A good number of probe kills, getting a pretty even military trade. And back at home, he's actually been pumping ghosts behind this. Four in total now. So this army composition here for Innovation looking really strong against what Creator's got. And keep in mind, Creator with only three Templar, I don't know how much energy these have because he's been having to use a lot of Storm over the past couple minutes. Yeah, it's a good point. He may have, uh, you know, Templars without really much energy. This is a lot of mines coming down here. I feel like Innovation has one of the ideal compositions here to deal with what Creator has. On yeah. the field, Creator, I think, possibly trying to wait to buy some time for a few more side storms, but Innovation really pushing. Yeah, and he's basically drawing out a lot of these units into the mines. There are so many mines wow. here. Like, it's actually wild. I think that we might just see Innovation, like, uh, strong arm the Protoss and just close this game out. Now, only one storm. It's a good one, but there's just so much here for Innovation. 95 army supply to 40, and... We might have a really fast 2-0 here. This is yeah. a dangerous spot for Protoss, man. I don't think Creator is going to be able to wiggle his way out of this one. No. That's it. GG Innovation 2-0's Creator. Um, especially in game two, he just looked like so much better yeah. than Creator. Like, uh, you know, and it was funny, too, because Innovation had these attacks that weren't exactly ideal. But then you come back, and it's like, I guess he's just macroing faster. Yeah, the first I guess he never drop. misses depots. I don't know. He had so much stuff. I mean, this is what he was known for for a very long time yeah. earlier in his career, you know, before he had to go to military services, just being one of those Terrans that can power up and macro and just have so many units. And, I mean, kind of flexing those muscles here in Group D against Creator, and that's going to be a quick 2-0. It's crazy, man. Um, there really was only I thought one. Was, I thought yeah. we have a longer series than that. I'm kind of like <laughs> yeah, not me too. ready. I, this isn't sitting well <laughs> with me. I'm like, oh, okay, can we make it a best of five? Can you guys do one more? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we came into today understanding that it might be one of the faster days here in the group right. stage of, uh, you know, round of 16 here at the GSL because TVP tends to be one of those matchups where games can just end around the eight or nine minute mark more often than not. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I was not expecting such a fast 2 there from Innovation. We've got another TVP coming up. It's going to be Classic versus Bunny. Uh, remember that we do not have any Protosses in the round of eight yet, and this is the last day of the round of 16. So fingers crossed we get one through, but... Uh, I think it's going to have to be classic if it is going to be a Protoss that survives because right now Creator is looking outclassed. I have to imagine Bunny is in better shape than Innovation. Yeah. And, um, I would think so. Bunny, yeah. he's just always been solid, always making deep runs in Code S. He's been in Code right. S forever. And guys, we're going to go to a break. When we get back, another TVP is Group D continues on. Don't go anywhere.
시작합니다. 같은 하루에서 답답함을 빼면 더 청량해질 거야. 제로처럼. 우리 없어도 되는 건 빼고 살자. 칠성 사이다 제로. 
I would think so. I mean, he was my favorite pick coming into the group just overall. And Bunny just rock solid TVP in a pretty good place. I feel like a good place for his style of TVP specifically. He's very aggressive. He likes to play these bio balls and, you know, Protoss just kind of feels like they're in this tenuous place where they're very fragile around the eight minute mark, nine minute mark, oftentimes games end. But if you can get past that point, then things start to equalize a little bit. Yeah. It's just tough. It's so difficult against these Terran players that just know how to pick you apart. Classic wins the award for the uh, Blandis room. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen here, and hold on, let's. Where is Bunny at? He X. looks like he's at a beach house or something. There's like the lighting's like just set a certain way. Oh, I like that mirror he's got behind him. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like his. Oh, he's room got a little a welcome mat too. This is nice. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. That's, that's a comfy right. room. Why don't you come check out my gamer room? And you go, oh, there's a little welcome mat here. You put your little toes on it. Feels good. <laughs> <laughs> little toes. Yeah. You just you squiggle your toes through there. You go, oh, I like this. Oh. Um. Yeah, I think Bunny probably the favorite to advance from this group. I mean, he's just a rock solid play player, yeah. and um, I'm a little concerned now that we won't get a Protoss player advancing because, like, as good as Classic is historically, he hasn't been having as much success since coming back from military service a while ago. Yeah, he's um been struggling to kind of regain his footing. I mean, this is a guy that I think got top four, if I'm not mistaken, in like two consecutive BlizzCons, mm -hmm. which is just like incredible. It's crazy, right? Yeah, I mean, that's you're on top of the world for your race if you're doing that that consistently but it's been a difficult journey for him back here in gsl code s whereas bunny just you know consistent as it gets just always fighting for top positions here in gsl and it's going to be an uphill batter battle here for classic but you know, one interesting thing that i did notice when i was trying to you know find some vods for the cast today to you know tune in these guys see how they're playing is bunny really hasn't been playing in a lot of online cups he hasn't been playing in a lot of leagues since i am I think he's just been kind of quietly practicing back at home, so it's hard to pin exactly where he's at, and maybe we will have room for an upset here. Yeah, who knows? We're gonna go to Royal Blood to start this out. Classic versus the Bunster. The Bunster. The Bunster. The Bunnerino. Let's do this. Classic. That room gets me excited, <laughs> man. It's just. At least you have a little bit of color there on like the, <laughs> with the mechanism we close the what door. What do you want to bet in that room, the classics, Funny. and we open up that closet behind him and it's also totally empty? It's, just like <laughs> it's like the closet, like a hotel room. You just open it, it's just like a white wall yeah, yeah. with like three white hangers. Like, okay. <laughs> it's just a copy of the Bible in there. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, all right, here we go on Royal Blood. Yeah, let's, let's see what we've got here. Um, we do have Classic immediately coming out with his probe and checking if there's any kind of barracks hidden behind his minerals. Yeah, gateway scout here for Classic. Interestingly going for um, Gateway right there in the main basin. Man, he's really paranoid here against Bunny. I wonder if there's some kind of metagaming going on right now. <laughs> like if Classic has had proxy barracks or something to that effect as a weakness recently, or if he's caught wind that this might be something Bunny's probably going to pull out during this series because in terms of early game PBT scouting, he definitely seems the most paranoid by far of everybody that we've seen. Yeah, very, very concerned that something might be out there. Um, yeah, this is, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, like with Classic here, if he loses, how bad could this get for Protoss? Because like, I was really expecting Creator to beat Innovation. I was too. That, that, that was for me one of the more obvious matchups. And now that now that he's gone, I'm like, oh man, is this really going to be like a round of eight with just two races? And like we're going back to Warcraft two. It's going to be orcs versus humans for the uh, <laughs> orcs versus later part humans. of this. Yeah, it's very surface level analysis, like going to a Ligalac, like looking up innovation stats for the past two months, because that's how long he's been playing in tournaments again, right? But right, his P his TVP form, it's it's not very good, despite the matchup feeling like it's in a good spot for Terran overall. So I was concerned for him coming into today, but that was a clean 2-0. And so now you got to think, all right, well, if Classic can't beat Bunny, Bunny definitely the favorite here in this matchup, we're going to have a PvP losers match. And then God, it's going to come down to either Creator or Classic coming up into a player that's already won a TVP today. Right. And the decider. It can get scary, man. We might have only one Protoss in the round of eight. We might have zero. You might have zero, man. That would be very unfortunate. Uh, regardless, if there's no Protosses in the round of eight, we'll still have people talking about Protoss being OP. It'll still <laughs> yeah, it'll still be there on this chat. This is the one thing I've just discovered about StarCraft is the, the 
you know, the thing that we do all the time that's called the tournaments to figure out who's the best, the ones the Protoss don't win, those don't seem to impact <laughs> the, the, the thinking of these people. Stormgate's going to come out, and the community's just going to decide that one of these factions is actually yeah. Protoss, and we yeah. all have to hate them There's going to be one that has something that's like a pylon, and they're like, well, that's the OP one then. <laughs> and, of course, it'll be the, uh, the other two races that'll win the tournaments, but that won't change the narrative. <laughs> um, uh... All right, well, let's see how this one goes. It's going to be a Phoenix opening here for Classic, so not opting for that early Oracle. Probably going to be banking these Phoenixes, and actually, no, seeing that rally point, maybe going to go for a scout. Let's see. Zoning away this Hellion for now. I think Innovation really wants to gather a little bit more intel on what Classic is cooking up back at home. Yeah, we are going to have a, a Widowmine drop come in here. Actually, a very similar opening to what we saw from Innovation. Um, the Robo is on the way, but in this case, the, the Protoss is pooling um, Phoenixes, and I think this is a great way to deal with the opener that Bunny's doing. I mean, this is kind of your bread and butter TVP opener, but the fact that you can just catch the Widow Mines in the Medivac and shut this down entirely is huge. Yeah, if a minimum, if a, I keep combining these words, if a, if a, if a Widow Mine, mine, a, a, mine, mine, mine <laughs> a Middle Mine, a Middle Mine, a if a Minnow goes up a stream. <laughs> but if we have, okay, so Phoenixes do get spotted, so. Possibly, I think we will still see a medevac drop. It'll be coupled with these marines. It'll just be more conservative because Bunny's not going to want to get in the kind of doomsday scenario where you send in like two or three widow mines and a medevac, and they all get picked off by phoenixes and you get nothing. And um, huh, this is kind of uh, reminding me of what Stats' game plan was coming into his GSL group. I mean, he didn't really get to showcase it that much because he just kind of got bopped early in a lot of those games, but. Yeah. Yeah, this Phoenix into third base while teching into Robo base style is starting to gather a little bit of popularity coming here into Colossus Tech. And it's something that I, I could see Classic kind of meshing well with his approach. And especially even only cutting Phoenixes now at two since they got spotted. I like this for him so far. This is nice. Oftentimes you'll see these Protoss players build up like four or five Phoenixes, and that opens up an opportunity where it's like, okay, you spent almost a thousand resources on. Yeah. This unit that, in a big fight, doesn't have much utility. Yeah, it's like the exact worst number of Phoenixes to have when there's a huge push with Marines and, and you know, Medivacs coming out. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really beat anything. Uh, the two basing is going to continue here. This should be all synced up to uh, line up with a plus one attack uh, that Terran's going for. I don't see a third command center, although we did see in the previous game, Innovation just kind of gets that a little bit late. Maybe we see the same thing here with Bunny. Yeah, if we do have a timing attack come out from Buddy, I imagine it's going to be syncing up with uh, <coughs> combat shields here. So we'll see what he opts to do. More Widow Mines in production, so it will not be that Siege Tank push. And I, I, I'm liking what I'm seeing from Classic, man. He's spreading these pylons around the map. He's, you know, slowly trickling in these Phoenixes. He didn't go too crazy about it early on. Allowed himself to speed up that Colossus tech. Get a sentry out, which has been gathering energy for who knows how long now. Thermal Lance already underway. Third base up and running. I mean, this is pretty solid. He's just going to have to weather the coming storm over the next couple of minutes. If he's able to manage this attack, it could go very well for him. Yeah, but this is going to be a pretty scary attack. This is a really powered up, um, you know, two basing Terran here. I like the Phoenixes coming up here to nab these Widow Mines and basically reduce uh, anything reinforcement wise that's coming. But it does not. Uh, you know, you can't deny that this Terran push is about to come down here and hit. Uh, infantry level uh, weapons one is about to finish as his combat shield. I see two Colossus down here and a third one on the way. Is he going to have enough to stop this? Yeah, third Col three Colossi in total is interfe interference matrix goes down on one. There's a lot of damage coming out of the Protoss army and Bunny's just going to have to try and micro his way around this as all the Widow Mines just got skirted around. Not a single one popped off there. Yeah, that actually went very poorly for the Terran. I'm starting to feel like uh, Classic's in really good shape and I think there's uh, very, it's very possible Classic might even try to push out here and deny the third. Uh, before it lands. Yeah, this is nice here for Classic. I think part of it comes back to him kind of slowly trickling in these Phoenixes instead of rushing them out because getting that third Colossus suddenly means you can't matrix every single one. And with how Marine heavy Bunny's army composition is at this moment, those Colossi, they really mow him down. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, wor I'm worried now for Bunny. I don't think he's going to have an army that's quite strong enough to ever really engage with what Protoss has. Hold on a second. He's going to walk right into this Widow Mine. He walks into Widow Mine. I think the sentry does go down there. As 
Funny just continuing to micro his way. Does clean up some of these pylons, trying to deny a little bit of vision. And man, Classic just pulling out all the stops. Proxy gateway here for the Zealot run buys. I'm loving this from him. Yeah, this is very cool to see. Well, it's, I think it's because we have um, so much roaming here from Bunny that he just wants to try to set up a small area where he can start to send Zealots through and try to counterattack. Uh, and if he can get those Zealots up into the natural or maybe even into the main, then he could probably push and uh, punt the third uh, command center off uh, of its position as well. And no armory yet for Bunny, so Classic able to spot that Widow Mine after it shoots, pick it off as well. And um, with charge underway, keeping that Widow Mine count under control is going to be pretty key here for Classic, I think, is it's often one of those splash damages that Terran likes to rely heavily on against these high tech Protoss compositions. Because if you're spending all this gas on, you know, maintaining at least one sentry, having a healthy number of Phoenixes, getting in Templar for Storm or Archons, mixing in Colossi, you don't have much more than minerals to just pump Zealots with, right? So, right. these Widow Mines, critical units here for the Terran, but. As of yet, only six on the field. Yeah, he hasn't been in a position where it makes sense to send him on over. Protoss is taking a fourth base here. Um, but I guess as far as Classic's concerned, he's not done building up. We have a Warp Prism that's on the way. That could be the cue uh, for him to then come out on the map. But it looks like it's actually going to be Classic on the defense, or at least he needs to be on the defense, as Terran is about to come down here and pounce on this fourth Nexus. Yeah, no vision here in the middle, so Classic going to get blindsided a little bit. He's going to race to reinforce here, but the Widow Mines get burrowed in a fantastic position, and I'm not sure if we actually have an Observer here with this Protoss army. It might be hard for him to deal with those Widow Mines there on the Nexus. I think he's just going to let it bleed out as these Zealots do get denied now coming into the third base. Oh, Charge just now finishes. I was like, is he really having slow Zealots like 10 minutes into this game? <laughs> um, so the Zealots are shut down. Uh, obviously, Protoss lost that Nexus, but I, this is going to be the moment where maybe Classic can come up here and, and try to win this with a push of his own. Yeah, oftentimes it feels like if Protoss isn't ahead of base in a PPT, it feels they're in a bad position because you kind of need to have a swarm of gateway units to actually handle the bioforce that gets thrown at you, right? But as it is right now, Classic's army, he hasn't really had any bad trades where he lost a lot of key units, but actually hold that thought, Taze. Let's look at the minimap right now. We might be entering some base trade territory with Bunny moving down to the six o'clock position here and Classic hitting the third base of Terran. Yeah, he's going to wipe this out very quickly. Now, you could very easily just get up into the main as Protoss. Uh, there is more locations that need to be picked off in this game for the Protoss than there are for the Terran. Um, he's just going to continue to move up here. This is getting wild here, State. Yeah, this is going to be a crazy one. And keep in mind that Phoenixes are on the field, so lifted buildings can eventually get bled out as long as those Phoenix remain alive. A lot of these critical upgrades here for Protoss, though, unfortunately will not be able to complete. So he will not have 2-2, two, two, he will not have Blink. The, the other thing to note is that there's still this gateway up at the top of the map. Mm -hmm. the, you know, if the conditions are you have to destroy all the buildings, then there's just more places that Terran's going to have to venture to. Uh, and we have an extra Nexus being made over here uh, as well, just at the gold base. The command center is going to be destroyed. Um, I think that Classic actually wins this game. I think so too. Looking at the units that we have on the field right now, I favor Classic's army, even though the army supplies are even. And I mean, just it's one of the benefits of going Phoenix is in this very rare situation, you actually do have a unit that can kill these flying structures is oftentimes it can be such a headache for Protoss trying to play whack-a-mole, chasing yeah. down all these locations where command centers get planted. And, and this is the last command center right over here, I think. Oh, I'm sorry, there's one more at the top right. But I mean, there are no SCVs. Yes, you could land mules, but uh, Protoss already has a couple probes. Uh, I think Ooh. it's like three or four up here. Yeah, shield battery is going down too. Also, keep in mind, Classic having that gateway means he could power up more quickly with that cybernetics core, more rapidly get out more shield batteries after his units get, um, or his tech gets reset back at home. And um, yeah, I'm looking at this Protoss army, and I think if Classic takes the engagement right, he should be able to defeat this Terran force. I mean, it's a lot of bio, don't get me wrong, but Bunny kind of has to attack into him. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a lot that, that, that Terran has. Uh, I'm worried, though, that, I, that, that Protoss might just have enough of everything to kind of take this on. Um, there are a lot of Vikings that could be used to try to hit these Colossi at a distance. Yeah, there is no blink. Keep that in mind. So yeah. only five stalkers without blink. 
And all right, here we go. Engagement underway. Classic actually confident enough to, confident enough to push forward. A lot of this bio just getting melted yeah, here by this back just, line of Colossi. Too many Archons and too many Colossi here. This just gets thinned out. The Phoenixes could pick up the Stray Marauders uh, and even pursue these Medivacs that are over here. That's going to be game. GG Classic takes it uh, in the first map. An, an impressive showing. Yeah, that was a really good game there by Classic. I mean, that was... You know, that kind of reminds me of Classic back in his heyday with just how solid he looked from start to finish, going from from Phoenix into Colossus. He handled yeah. that transition perfectly. He had the third Colossus in time for that Terran push to come out, so suddenly the Raven, no, it can't Matrix all three of them. He's going to have some splash damage. That forces Bunny to pull away. And then just, you know, the way that he was played slow and passive back at home, filled out his tech tree to the best of his ability, macro it up. I mean, he, he built an army that never really got its high tier unit count reset at any point. Right. I, I you know, I, I love that Classic was willing to just abandon the Nexus when he got out of position. He's like, oh, I'm not even gonna try. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what Terran wants is, is to get them out of position like that and then get further behind. But yeah, he, he basically gave that up, patiently remade the Nexus again, moved out. When he identified it was a base trade, he was very, very methodical about what he I uh, had to do, he made sure to take out all the SCVs and the command centers and then just bank up enough to get, you know, that extra Nexus made that's going to basically be your your, your lifeboat <laughs> yeah. in, the, in the base trade. Uh, anyways, we're going to go on to Ancient Sister now here for map number two. Right now, Classic with a 1-0 lead versus Bunny. Classic. Love something that the, room. Something about the angle, too. It's, <laughs> it's like, like his head so low, <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the, that door behind him is so tall. Mm -hmm. Mystery Gaming Bunny. It's like if you study photography, they try to teach you to, you know, like set up like in thirds sometimes. Yes, or like yes. these lines. Yes. Or if you're a super nerd, like yes. you'll do like some golden ratio stuff. But I'm, not, I'm not smart yeah, enough. There for is that. a little bit of a Wes Anderson <laughs> vibe as far yeah, as there. how the camera's set up there in Classic's room. It's, it's a little, it's a little offbeat. It's yeah, a little offbeat. It just makes the void feel so yeah. much more consuming. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna go on in this game um, and see if you know Bunny can actually tie this up here with uh with Classic. I got to say I'm very very impressed with how Classic's looking. I got to say that was the most solid Protoss game we've had so far here in the GSL coming all the way in group D. Oh yeah. And um from Classic too. I wasn't expecting that. You know, I thought it might be Hero, it might be Creator coming through, but that was just it felt like almost a clinic on PBT. Well, let's also keep in mind, like, nobody made Bunny do a base trade. Like, that right. just happened. Classic was moving out, and Bunny just ran in there, and Classic's like, all right, well, I'm going to I'm gonna be in better shape than you uh, in this moment. I, I'm curious what would have happened had he tried to actually fight that, although maybe he would have just lost the army and died anyway. It did seem like Classic was basically able to bring the game to where he needed it to be, to about 11 minutes where he has you know, the Colossi, the Archons, an Immortal, uh, uh, everything that he's going to need to basically kind of sweep through and, and remove anything Terran related. Yeah, it felt like Classic just kind of navigated all of the problems that Bunny threw at him perfectly. Yeah. And if you do that as Protoss and Terran invest so much in those attacks, more often than not, you're going to be in a good position. It's just it's right. tough to do. It's very difficult to do. And you know, a lot of that was also Classic being very rigorous with his <laughs> scouting. I mean, he had pylons thrown all over the map, just basically right observers covering so much distance so much locations or so many locations excuse me and um you know bonnie just kind of got stopped at every turn he was only able to find i think like a fourth base denial was the only real damage he was yeah. able to manifest that entire game um so so far in this game i mean we, we're kind of waiting to see what kind of tech it's going to be i assume we're going to have blink upgraded unless we have another surprise dt build dt seem to be very popular this season so far yeah. Uh, although they haven't served the Protosses that well since none are in the round of eight yet. <laughs> no. Uh, so it's going to be Stalker Blink. They're going to be Blink again here for Classic. So deviating, uh, deviating a little bit from that Phoenix opening that we saw in game number one here against Bunny. And I'm wondering exactly what flavor a Blink Stalker build this is going to be. If it's going to be something a little bit more aggressive, potentially with four gates and a Robo, or if this is just going to be Classic going, you know, two gate, three gate Robo with the third base. And just trying to macro up because you know his macro, his defense, it felt so solid in that previous game. I would not be surprised 
if he just continued to try to play that defensive game and be like, okay, Bunny, try to find the hole in my armor. Try to find my weakness. If you don't, I will pressure you. I think he's going to do aggro uh, three gate or four gate with Robo. Oh, is that another gateway there at the third base? Oh, actually, I the so. Robo. Robo, okay. Robo and two more gates are coming. Yeah, so there is potential for aggression here. But um, shouldn't be super committed, especially now the scout getting off does do these three gateways. And I think the Twilight Council for Bunny, I think it might have gotten close enough to see that TC. I think you basically just expect that to happen. Yeah, that's also um, true. You see these stalkers and more gateways working. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> all like, right, okay. I know what this is. This game's been out like 13 years. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so if he's not going to be aggressive with it, he'll just be taking a third base, and you basically use the Stalkers with Blink to intercept Medivacs that are going to try to drop you. Yeah, it's going to be a Cyclone push here coming out from Bunny as well. And Okay, Observer first here for Classic. So if he had gone for a Warp Prism, actually Bunny coming back on the map. All right, he's not going to be committing. I was going to say, if, if he decides to commit against Stalkers and potentially a Warp Prism, that could go really badly for him, as we've seen, uh, you know, Players just get so good at judging or not juggling units and warp prisms and a medevacs and right avoiding those lock ons. And you know, Bunny just now powering back up at home. Robo Bay will be the tech of choice again here for Classic, just getting there a little bit differently with Blink. Yeah, it's just gonna get Colossus out after that. I thought we might have a warp prism and some uh, aggression. You can see Terran is set up to, to fight. Uh, Blink Stalker's coming up there. He basically has his tank on the other side of all of his infrastructure ready. Uh, like that's set up kind of like a little wall here. Um, but, yeah, we're not going to see anything of the sort. It's going to be classic playing a pretty uh, reserved macro game, just basically focused on development. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Both these guys, pretty passive. And, you know, this is a matchup where you can have a lot of engagements early on, but they really seem to want to basically stay back. Oh, hold on. He is going to come out with these um, stalkers now. Yeah, but with the third base and Colossus underway, I, I feel like this is probably just going to be him. Oh, he's going to blink up, isn't he? It just looks so juicy. <laughs> yeah. All right, he's going to come in. Let's see what damage he's able to find. But Yeah, I mean, the um, the tank back there makes it really hard to actually like try to commit down on the tech lab or anything else like that. So I would imagine he's going to just blink out as soon as he can. He might try to come in here and see if he wow. can I guess kill some workers. Might try to recall. This is an interesting play to blink back here. Kind of natural. Oh, that one pure, poor stalker. <laughs> just I know. It's like, no, no, guys, what about me? Does get taken out, so two stalkers do fall. And I like classic kind of posturing, like he is going to make a highly aggressive play. But yeah, a lot of that is just trying to keep Bunny in his base and allow classic to power up, buy him some time, and you know build up back at home. Is he wants to have charge done? He wants to have Colossi out before the big engagement comes. But Bunny, I ooh. Hold on a second. This Tasteless. is cool. Classic going to go for the counter attack. He's going to get combat shields. Oh, this yeah, is sick. This is a pretty wild deny. Uh, he did not manage to get Stim, unfortunately. Yeah, I do not think Bunny was anticipating Classic coming back so quickly from his main base after that recall. Yeah, and you know, it, it's it, the, the Stalker Ass is still happening here. Yeah, this is a dangerous oh, situation, drop. though. I mean, the counter damage potential here is huge with this double drop in the main base. Only three pylons powering all six of these gateways, and that is the bulk of Classic's production. Probe's also going down 10 dead already. Man, uh, this is this is wild. Hold on a second. And then there's going to be a push up at the third base. We don't have it on camera just yet, but it's coming Ooh. and he's going to take out that. This might be like almost all the probes, by the way. That's the a lot of probes. are coming back, but. A lot of probes going down. Double turrets here as well as I think this will eventually get cleaned up here as Bunny doesn't have enough strength to actually force down that shield battery. So these stalkers will be able to push this force away. And you know, at the end of the day, the army supplies are going to kind of equalize after this, but. Bunny got the better end of this trade. Yeah, I mean, Bunny at least has a healthy um, you know, macro engine back at home. I mean, he has enough SUVs for every mineral patch. Um, I do think that, I mean, Bunny basically traded out almost all of his entire army. Uh, so there's that. We still have the sophistication that Protoss needs. We, st we do still have a Colossus. We've got a decent number of Stalkers. Um, and we have a third command center starting here for Bunny, too. So uh, are things going to quiet down again here? I, I think they might. I think they might, but I'm, I'm concerned for Classic once Combat Shields completes just because his economy got reset so hard there. And Oh, oh my how god! How are you so How does he good? have that inside? I don't even... That's wild, man. Oh, I love it. I love it. I mean, sometimes you just get this feeling as a Protoss player. I mean, this happened yeah. to me sometimes in practice where it's like, okay, they're going to be going for a drop. Probably they're going to be going for my third base. I'm just going to send Stalkers on an intercept path and maybe I'll get lucky. And, yeah, and that's yeah. the kind of moment that's where exactly you get like lucky. That. 
and it just feels so good. And that's the kind of thing that can kind of give you a little bit of a confidence boost. Oh yeah, in the booth after you. There's like execute nothing better than like actually this. shooting down someone's medevac. Especially in the blind, especially when you're doing it yeah, by gut yeah. instinct. Yeah, where you're like, no, I think he's going to send something out. Mm -hmm. And then you just go there and intercept it. And B Classic, right now, frankly, he does need a couple wins like that because Bunny, I mean, the worker supply, it's only just now getting close to equalizing. He has to find some catches like this. He has to take some favorable trades. Otherwise, Bunny's army supply is just going to start to balloon over his. And this damaged medevac, unfortunately, does not get intercepted coming into the third base. Oh, and that's actually a oh lot more probes God. going down. They that's... got all bunched up. That's so much. It's wild, man. Yeah, you would think that Classic would have had something in position there to actually catch that medevac after, you know, almost completely intercepting it there at the 6 o'clock, but no, not able to make it happen. 14 wow. more probes get down just after Classic equalizes, too. Yeah, he, like Classic had caught all the way back up, and now he's going to have to keep making workers. He's already lost 41 probes this game, but hold oh, on goodness. a second. There's a big push coming out. Uh, this time, Terran not going to try to base trade. Instead, he wants to try to take this on head on. Um, three Colossi is a lot. I don't see a Raven here, so that means there won't be any Disables. Oh, this is a, a little bit of a staggered engagement where the Colossi were not actually doing the damage they needed to do. Yeah, and they even leave one tank alive, which is clearly a mistake as well. Yeah, I, I, I think this might just be classic feeling that he has to get something done yeah. after losing a second round yeah, of a I, massive number of probes. He realizes the situation is you know, tenuous at best here. Is he's going to dive in again. Stalkers blink on top of the tanks. We'll be able to for force one down. Colossi getting juggled in the back. Three Vikings going to try to focus now on the War Prism to prevent this micro, but there's just so much Terran on the ground. Colossi will get cleaned up, and Bunny's going to tie it up one-to-one -one here against Classic. The Bunster does it. He gets that kill there. Um, you know, I, I, I actually appreciate Classic trying to just end the game right there. He's like, okay, I'm so behind. Maybe I could just make a bunch of zealots and kind of swarm in there. But he had a very poor engage. Uh, Bunny's coming back. He's looking very strong. Um, and... I, I like Classic's, like, blink counter into the main. But it was so good. It looked really good. But the problem was he was spread so thin on three bases that the drop in the main and then the push at the third, I mean, he killed so many probes. And then the medevac drop uh, with the Widow Mines. Yeah. Not, the, like, 13 probes. The, so. the, the damage was all right there blinking into the main base, but yeah. the second Widow Mine drop coming in and then resetting the probe count yet again just kind of forces Classic's hand. He's like, okay, I, I can no longer yeah. win. I'm no longer in a position where I can win a macro game. Let's go for the Hail Mary play. We just have charge done. You know, we got three Colossi out. There isn't a Raven on the field. We sniped that earlier. Maybe we can go for a killing blow, but, you know, Bunny just too good there with the defense, recognizing the situation, pulling the boys, just defeating that army. And that's going to be the series tied up one-to-one, -one, but I I'm still loving the play that we're seeing out of Classic. I feel yeah. like... You know, if it wasn't for a couple of missteps there, he very easily could have come back in game number two and really made a show of it. Yeah, let's see what uh, what we've got next here on the map, Babylon. Um, Classic versus Bunny continuing on. Remember that uh, Innovation is waiting to take on the winner while Creator is waiting to take on the loser of this series. And map three's loaded up. Let's go. Classic. Mystery Gaming, Bunny. You know, with how um, Paranoid Classics probe scouting has been in the early stages of, the, of these games so far this series, I was almost convinced that Bunny was going to go for a proxy. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Yeah, that was uh, it has been a fun series so far. It's been a lot better than, honestly, um, uh, creator versus innovation. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah, that was just like over before I felt like we even got warmed up to it. And yeah, and Creator's a great player too, and you know his PVT is better than his showcase there in that uh, that series, but unfortunately just not going his way. And you know, Classic and Bunny now, it almost feels like anyone can take this game three. I'm, I'm liking what we're seeing out of both players. It does feel like Bunny is maybe slightly better, only because, you know, Bunny basically lost in game one because of a very bad decision to try to do a base trade in a position where just pretty much the Protoss is always going to be okay. Um, but, yeah, I mean, in, in a game that was more about, like, you know, tactics and strategy, it's, it, it did seem like um, 
Bunny came out on top. Or a classic came out on top. Oh, no, no. Why am I say Bunny came out on top? Sorry. <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah, but there were also, like, a lot of moments in that game number one, too. Like, remember how we got there for classic to get into that position where a base trade just wins the game outright for him? Right. You know, it was a very difficult series of attacks that he was able to navigate while going for a Phoenix Colossus build, which is one of the more fragile openings that you can do as Protoss. <laughs> Although it's one of those openings that also can pay the most dividends if you are able to successfully right. get to the point where you want to be with, you know, three Colossi out, four or five Phoenixes, some gateways, some a third base, potentially a fourth base. And um, yeah, Classic just did it really well. I'm liking what we're seeing out of him so far here in uh, season one of GSL this year. And I'm hoping that we see more of this because, I mean, it's frankly been kind of missing from GSL Code S, not only here this season. I mean, of course, we don't have any Protosses yet qualified for the round of eight, but you know, last year as well, it felt like besides Creator and Hero, we didn't really get too many bright stories for Protoss overall. You're right. No, it did not seem like that at all, uh, unfortunately. Um, I, I think this is doable here for, for Classic. I think that, um, you know, it's it's funny. We've had... We've had Actually, in both our best of threes, moments where the Protoss, whether it's Stalkers or DT, is like some kind of plan to like come in and, and, and basically <laughs> use this as a pin. Like the Terran leaves and you come in, you start to like, kill stuff. But in both times, it actually backfired. Yeah, the Terran's like, okay, the that's not the a Terran pin. ignored it. Terran's like, I'll just <laughs> attack with all my SCVs uh, and I'm going to still push you. And um, I mean, there is something you can kind of take away from this. Like, you know, m maybe the last couple weeks this was working. You know, using like kind of a pin technique, but then Terrans realize like, oh, if they have this much stuff in the pin, you just go attack them because they don't have anything at home. Right. All right. Well, similar opening here for Classic, going back to that Phoenix Robo play that we saw in game number one. Look at this micro. This is wild. Yeah. Terran didn't lose anything. A lot of damage, but nothing dead. Yeah. Phoenixes are going to be pooled. We do have a Robo here as well. Uh, and it looks like we could have the uh, third base come up in a little bit. Widow Mines and a Viking actually going to be made here first. Huh. Yeah, the Viking is... the Viking. Viking is interesting. Let's see how Bunny decides to use that one. If he's feeling really cheeky, he might just send a cross map. <laughs> I'm kind of doubtful of that. Yeah. And only getting one. He stops making Vikings after that. Yeah, interesting starport usage. Now going for what I imagine is going to be a Raven right afterwards. It is that Raven, so. Huh. That is something you don't see too often. Probably won't have too much of a bearing here in the uh, the middle game, but it is always fascinating to see the little twist that these players come up with in their builds. As Phoenix is coming in, Widowmind shot does get off. Well, yeah, Widowmind shot and one Viking shot. That'll kill a Phoenix off. Yeah, well, I guess we see the utility maybe, of that maybe Viking. Maybe that's the idea. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Oftentimes, you see those Phoenixes come in and they get clipped by a Widowmind, but, you know, that's only like 99, or not 99, but like maybe 95% damage on right. a Phoenix, right? Yeah, not not enough to, to, you know, for it to be catastrophic. Yeah, but that Phoenix, or the Viking, excuse me, is pretty much already paid for itself. It killed the Phoenix. Yeah, I mean, I guess you, it, it's sort of like this... It, it's cheaper and more mobile than a turret, you know, yeah, and, and it kind of gets the job done. So I kind of like it now. At first, I had a lot of questions. I'm like, why? What? You know, we don't normally see a Viking that early. Um, it, it, I, I suppose it just pairs really well if you're anticipating this kind of early Phoenix play. And I like the way that Classic is navigating yet again. I think in total, he made three Phoenixes. Of course, one of them went down. And then going into Thermal Lance and Colossus and then resuming Phoenix production. I, I think a lot of people... Myself included, if they try to play this style, they're all about, okay, i got to get those five Phoenixes out as quickly as possible. Right. Start gathering that energy. Let's try to pick off maybe some SCVs at, like, refineries that are exposed. Let's try and get some damage in. And then suddenly Terran pushes across the map, and your Robotech has been delayed so much because you invested in those Stargate units that you can't defend. But right. classic, just, you know, finding exactly the right pacing, exactly the right balance of Robo and Stargate production to really make this work. And... We might get into a similar situation where Bunny's going to come and push across the map to try and pressure Classic's third base. And by then, Classic very well might have that third Colossus done already. And suddenly, you can't Matrix all of the AOE for Protoss. So um, we are going to have some movement out here on the map now. Um, I do see the Phoenixes are just brushing through. They are going to see that the push has basically begun, uh, almost getting that medevac here. And this is all lined up so that when Stim is done, he can move out, and basically the attack will hit when plus one at, uh, range attack is done for Terran. 
Um, so I, we got to see what exactly is going to be on the receiving end here for Protoss. I see two Colossi. I'm sure there's a third one that's uh, probably going to merge up with those two. Yeah, only about 25% done, though. So there might be a window here for Bunny that he did not get in game number one. And keep in mind that this Protoss army, although it is powerful without a Matrix, if these Colossi do get disabled, it loses a lot of its oomph as we have Bunny stimming in. Colossi going to try and focus down a couple of these Marines. But no, both disabled. Yeah, he disables it again. He's going to run up here, and these Widow Mines Oh, the Colossus, just... it's about to pop. It's going to get oh instantly focused God, down. Oh, it's stuck. Oh, actually, it gets denied there by the pylon. You know, that might actually save that Colossus. Is otherwise, I think it was mincemeat. It would have yeah. just popped on top of a yeah, bunch Yeah, weirdly, of it might have been better that it's, like, stuck inside the Robo right <laughs> yeah, I now. I really think that's the best-case scenario there. But, okay, the pressure continuing now. These Widow Mines coming into the third base here of Classic. He does see this, so probes will be pulled. Recall now coming in as he deflects the attack in the main base. These Widow Mines will get a shot off. On the Colossus, so not the best engagement there for oh. Bunny, but keep in mind that he was able to get 15 <laughs> probes during all of this. I didn't see these Marines at first. I looked. I was like, why are we looking at the main? Then I'm like, oh, there's four Marines up there. Still doing damage. Now, this actually did not go too bad for Classic. I mean, he, yeah. he lost a lot of probes, yes, but the worker counts, because he has that faster third base, I mean, Bunny, his third CC only just now completing, it's still equal. He will be able to use Chrono Boost to close that gap. And now he's in a position where... I think the Raven died. If it didn't die, yeah, it is dead. Matrix is not on the field. We have three Colossi, four Phoenix, and a ton of Stalkers. This is a scary Protoss army. Yeah, he's going to push in here now. And, I mean, we see the, the, the CC lifting off. I mean, it's, it's funny. It's like the Protoss kept alive everything that was super important. Yeah, it's, it's just like game one. Yeah, and, and you know, now this uh, CC is going to go down. That's, oh already, my goodness. that's already really bad. We might see Classic moving on to the winner's match, Tasteless. I this is so. some good play. Yeah, I mean, this is already looking very strong. We've got Terran up against the ropes. A fourth Colossus here. Some more Zealots as well. I guess Infantry Armor is going to finish. That's handy. But, I mean, can you really take on what Protoss has for the time being? I'm not so sure. I don't think you can, especially on a two-base economy here for Bunny. He's throwing down that third command center, but it's a long ways away from getting planted down and actually gathering resources and... You know, Bunny, it's almost like he's playing as if he has that third CC. He, right now, he's trying to get Ghosts out. He's trying to get Vikings out. He's trying yeah. to get all these answers. But the economy, it feels like, frankly, isn't really in the position yet where it can support this. And I'm a little worried that he might stretch himself too thin. If Classic comes in, say, with enough Blinkstalker to start focusing down the meager number of Vikings that are on the field, what is the answer to the Colossi? The Colossus yeah. count is getting really high. I mean, that that's the thing, right? And a lot of times, you know, when you have this many Colossi, everything's going to melt once they fire, right? And how many Colossi can you pick off before that stops happening? You probably need to get them down to under two. Right. And it's like there's just a lot here. You know, the Vikings, they can scratch the surface uh, and try to damage that Colossi. But also, you know, they're going to uh, – the, the uh, decision-making is always going to be to hit the – the Phoenixes before the Colossi. That's how the, the Viking will prioritize what it attacks first. Yeah, you gotta focus, you gotta micro those. Yeah. There's a lot of different micro that has to come in, and this is oftentimes why you see Terran players, they get into this kind of position where their army already isn't that great, and they have to micro perfectly. Yeah. It's tough. It's usually when Terran has the exact setup that they want with a massive fireball order, they actually have, you know, those couple extra seconds to make this micro happen without, you know, being at risk of losing your entire army in a moment. But uh, I, I'm not sure Bunny's going to be able to catch up to the force the Classic is building back at home. Now, that third CC, it does get planted. So he is back to a three-base economy. He should be able to start pumping out more Stargate units in addition to these six ghosts we already have on the field. You can see that uh, Terran's being very cautious here. The fourth base is coming up for Protoss. The third base is now up for the Terran. Um, and that wasn't even the main command center that he used there. So he still has the availability to kind of swap that in for something else. I just, I don't know, man. This is a lot from Protoss. Here we go. All right, Guardian Shield gets popped. EMPs on the Stalkers getting a lot of damage done. But these Colossi in the back just, I mean, doing work. Phoenixes do get eventually traded out. No more Phoenixes left on the field. That will make things a little easier here for Bunny, especially considering Blink is about only a third of the way done here. 
for Classic, and that might be his opportunity to try to get some damage in. If he can start to snipe down these Colossus, suddenly his army looks way better. It's just, will he be able to make that happen? Yeah, I just don't see a moment Terran's going to get in there. And again, it's it's the important units that are surviving. You can go on without Stalkers and Zealots, you know, but the now we've got Archons in the mix. We have um, the Colossi, of course, staying here. A Disruptor's about to come. Yeah, I think the, the critical thing oh. right now for Classic Pulling is to hold on to these Colossi. Do not let the Vikings focus them down as the boys are getting pulled. 2-2 going to be finishing here for Protoss, but that's a massive army now, especially with this SEV front line. Nine Vikings in total should make quick work of at least a couple of these Colossi, and here we go, Tasteless. Oh, man, these SCVs, I mean, how much are they going to tank, and is it going to make enough of a difference? We do see the army getting fractured. i got to say, actually, the, the, the SCV has soaked a lot of damage. The Vikings have killed off. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my goodness. This the SCV. Hail Mary play yeah. actually worked. The Vikings killed off all the Colossi while the SCV soaked up all the damage. Bunny with just the killer instinct knows he has to pull every single SCV, 41 of them going down there, but I mean, you don't need workers when you kill the army like that. 93 army supply to 17 as Classic was not able to keep his Colossi alive. They just all fell and that engagement couldn't have gone worse for him too. Bunny had a massive arc. There was no active shield battery within range once that army, um, you know, came in and that's going to be Bunny moving to the winner's match, man. Classic made a great run of it. I really thought that he had this game after he handled that first push, was able to move across the map, destroy that third command center there for Bunny, but Bunny just with the perfect read. Yeah, I mean, he just he has that killer instinct. I mean, you, you got to hand it to the guy. It's like, all right, well, you did that. He had just the right number of Vikings to actually kill those Colossi off, and the SCVs were, like, perfectly positioned. All the shots were fired down on the SCVs. Uh, I actually thought it wasn't going to work, and then we get to this moment, I'm like, oh god, he's so good. Yeah, maybe if there was a shield battery closer, and maybe if the Colossi were able to stay alive just a little bit longer to kind of spend more DPS on units other than the SCVs, but Look instead it's going to be Bunny. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> a little very dance. happy with that. Well, it's like, all right, that exactly worked perfectly. Like, it went to plan. How many games have we had where like we see the boys get pulled and they just die, and you're like, all right, get him out next. Um, this means we're going to have a Terran versus Terran coming up here. It's going to be Bunny versus Innovation. Yeah, and probably, I get the only PvP we're going to get in GSL is going to happen after that, too, in the losers match. We're yeah. not going to get another one. One of these Protoss players is going home, and one of them yeah. is going to be the last hope for Protoss to potentially make it to the round of eight. And, and I mean, we. I don't think it's going to happen right man. now. Innovation. <laughs> Bunny looks so good. Bunny looks no! good. Innovation, Innovation's TVP was kind of a question mark coming into today, but right. he was able to be creator. So that kind of answers some of those questions. Innovation seems like he's in better form than he's been looking online recently. So yeah. we might have a lot of Terrans moving into the round of eight, Tasteless. Going to be doing a lot of TVTs. Gom TVT, remember that meme? I do remember Gom ah, TVT, man. It's, it's back. back. It's a throwback. <sighs> um. Well, I mean, props for Bunny. That was actually a pretty beautiful ending there. I mean, he exactly knew when he could tip the scale in his favor. He came in there uh, and just the, the sacrifice for the SCVs could not have been more perfect, and he had exactly enough Vikings that yeah. n basically not a single Colossus shot hit a Marine. All went to the SCVs, and then that's, you know. Nine Vikings was just enough to melt through him. The yeah. shield batteries weren't in range. The Colossi went down and just... Well, Going to be a big win there for Terran. All we'll right, guys. Be, we'll be right back, guys. Short break, <laughs> and then we go to the winner's match. Started 
Worth living, reimagine all we've been given. Bury all the troubles in the past.
기분까지 가볍게 밀키스 제로 똑같은 하루에서 답답함을 빼면 더 청량해질 거야 제로처럼 우리 없어도 되는 건 빼고 살자 실성사이다 제로 IM 때 굉장히 연습을 열심히 했어가지고 당분간은 좀 쉬었고 이제 큰 대회들이 좀 있기 때문에 지금은 연습을 열심히 하고 지내고 있습니다 가벼운 휴식을 하면서 연습이랑 또 운동도 매일 꾸준히 하려고 좀 노력하고 지냈고 작년에 계속 못 쉬어가지고 한달반 정도 좀 쉬면서 스타트를 더 할까 고민도 좀 하고 생각 많이 하면서 좀 쉬었던 것 같아요 좋은 데 가가지고 사람들도 또 좋고 해서 편하게 잘 생활하고 온것 같습니다 제가 1위 진출한 거 요새 좀 성적이 잘안 나왔어가지고 다시 2위차 갈줄 알았는데 이렇게 1위차로 바로 뚫어가지고 굉장히 기분이 좋았습니다 신영 형 좋아하는데 희범이가 열심히 하고 잘하는 걸 알아가지고 저도 좀 마음이 안 좋았어요 그럼 이 신영이 같은 돈데 좀 복수 좀 해주나요? 제가 중요한 게 아니라 신영이 형이 중요해서 예상치 못하게 대역 전장에서 졌잖아 어, 예. 신경 아니었어요? 하기 전에는 사실 안질것 같다는 생각이 있었는데 하고 나서 보니까 흑표전은 사실 옛날이랑 다른 것도 없고 대여비 형이 워낙 잘하는 선수였어가지고 제가 좀 인정을 하게 됐던 근데 다시 만나면 충분히 자신 있습니다 연습을 뭐 아예 안한건 아니고 초반에 좀 하긴 했었는데 아무래도 뭐 딱히 들어갈 팀도 없고 하다 보니까 동기부여가 안 되긴 해서 그냥 신희범 선수가 굉장히 잘하는 선수고 잘 하시는데 제가 운 좋게 이겼다 <웃음> 그런 게된것 같아요 조를 봤는데 굉장히 좀 어렵다고 생각을 하고 있어요 그래도 못 통과할 정도는 아니라고 생각합니다 이재선 선수입니다 탑3 안에 든다고 생각해서 굉장히 만나면 좀 껄끄러울 것 같아요 신영이 형이 있어가지고 좀 어지럽네요 신영이 형 실력도 모르겠고 또 어떻게 뭘 짜올지도 모르겠어가지고 그냥 재밌을 것 같아요 기조에서 누구누구 올라갈 것 같아요? 어, 저랑 현우 올라갔었는데 늙은 두 사람은 떨어진다? 어, 그만해야죠 <웃음> 준비는 다 이제 골고루 해야 될것 같은데 오히려 신영이가 복병인 것 같아요 좀 실력을 모르겠어가지고 제가 또 잘할 땐 잘하거든요 또 못할 때 못해가지고 연습 안 해가지고 못했으면 좋겠네 그냥 할 만한 것 같다 도우 형이랑도 붙어봤고 재선이 뭐또 요새 좀 잘하는 것 같고 사실 이기기는 힘들지만 운이 또 다른 남이 이길 수도 있지 않을까 생각하고 있습니다 제가 최근에 GSL에서 활약한 게 없는데 올해는 좀 열심히 해서 좋은 성적 거둬서 좀 멋진 모습으로 남도록 하겠습니다 저의 이 복귀를 좀 바라는 분들이 몇분 계시긴 하더라고요 저도 지금 뭘 해야 될지 약간 고민 중인 시기여서 그래도 예전처럼 뭐 잘하는 그런 실력은 아니지만 재밌게 그냥 봐주셨으면 좋겠어요 프라임 무대도 많이 사라지고 많이 아쉬우셨을 텐데 그래도 재밌게 할게요 <웃음> 좋은 성적을 거두려고 좀 노력을 많이 하고 있어요 그래서 좀 많이 지켜봐 주셨으면 좋겠고 많은 응원 부탁드립니다 Today's matchup. Creator. Innovation. Classic. Bunny. And we're back here at the GSL. It's time for the winner's match. We're going to see which of these two players is going to advance and get that seventh spot in the round of eight. Uh, and who will go up against one of the Protosses that are going to duke it out after this to survive. Yeah, one TBT to decide who's going to be advancing to the round of eight, Innovation or Bunny. I mean, what a great story it would be if Innovation was able to come back, his first GSL Code S, back yeah. from military service, uh, make he, a round of he eight. He looks really good. He uh, did. I think Bunny looks a little bit stronger. That, that 
last game win that we saw there was really impressive from Bunny. It felt like a big comeback win. I mean, he needed everything to go perfect in terms of timing, in terms of attack positioning, and he just made it happen. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I mean, let's see what happens as we go into this next match. It is going to be a TVT here. Um, innovation, Bunny, uh, in a battle to try to get into that next spot here for the tournament. And uh, I'm going to say it again. Um, because I, I, I'm so not okay with this, but I think this might be what happens. No Protoss in the round of eight yet. It's possible. And we know one Terran's going to move on, so that's going to give us at least five Terrans in the round of eight. Five Terrans, two Zergs, and then either but another Terran be, or a Protoss. <laughs> it could be six Terrans in the round of eight. Oh, my heart. Six. This is going to be the best round of eight in GSL history. Yeah. What a what a way to start this 2023. Is, yeah. <laughs> um, we're going to go to Ancient Cistern uh, to start this off. Innovation and Bunny. Uh, as we continue on here in Group D, the final group in the round of 16. Our map has loaded up, guys. Let's go. Innovation. Beep boop. <laughs> so the robot sound yeah. that he makes, or is that the announcer? <laughs> That's the robot sound for innovation, but it was the robot voice that came on. For some reason, we have an Android in the intro to the show, Mystery by the way. Gaming. I don't know. Yeah, it's Andro Androids and Chains is the theme of the yeah. GSL here in 2023. As the Chains are keeping all the Protoss players out, and the Androids <laughs> are the, the Terrans with their kind of generic openings. The androids are like Chat GPC 7 here, like yeah. the Kropulu sector that's like coming to eliminate all the yeah. Protoss players. It's just nothing but t Android Terrans all saying just play like Mario, like just. I'm telling you, man, the way AI is going, StarCraft 2 being, you know, millennia in the future, actually all the time, like hundreds of years in the future. Yes. It's not going to be Bio, man. It's going to be Mech. It's going to be Mech, <laughs> man. We're, we're going to be phased out. We're going to be phased, yeah. The <laughs> Marines are not going to have jobs anymore. No. We're going to be completely replaced by Cyclones. <laughs> uh, so we've got um, double gas on both sides. Yeah, mirrored opening so far. Both but players probably going to go for some higher tech aggression here. Innovation has more uh, wins versus Bunny. We had the stat displayed there a second ago. It's I gone now. It. But um, I, I, I don't want to rely on those stats too much. Like, well, the game's actually been out for so long that, like, you really got to focus on, like, who's in good shape now. Yeah, now, it's more about form. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What, what kind of condition are you in as of today? Because... When Innovation was smashing Bunny, that was like, you know, seven, eight, nine years ago. Um, Bunny's just a different player entirely now. Yeah, he's been improving steadily over the course of many years. I think it was even um, it was either Creator or Innovation that said that he's probably the top three, a top three Terran, in the play Terran player in the world right now mm -hmm. in those interviews that we had during the break. And I certainly agree with him. Bunny just seems so strong. And Innovation, only two months back really here in StarCraft 2, is going to have his work cut out for him to try and beat Bunny here in a TBT, which has proven to be one of the more technical and, I mean, frankly, kind of weird matchups at times in the round of 16. I mean, yeah. things can kind of turn on a dime very quickly. I love TBT in, in, in StarCraft 2. It's, uh, I think they've definitely improved it from what it was in StarCraft 1. You know, I'm doing ASL at the same time I'm doing GSL, so now... Yeah, we were I, talking about I, this. You said it's like all vultures, <laughs> vultures right? Yeah, TBT, <laughs> and yeah, it's... it's uh, it, 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 Both sides end up accumulating a lot of vultures on three factories and then eventually get a tank out. Um, and, and it's it's kind <laughs> of a... I don't know. I think StarCraft 2, TBT, it's a little bit more dynamic. Uh, I think there's a lot more interesting stuff that can happen in the mid-game. Just wait until 2025 when we get to the StarCraft 2 equivalent of that StarCraft 1 meta and everyone's just making 5-rack sweeper again. That's right, yeah. <laughs> it's in the pipeline, man. <laughs> One of it's these coming. days. Yeah. All right. Innovation now coming in with a Hellion. Going to try and find an SCV kill. But just a little bit of poking and prodding. Yeah, cute little setup. He's not going to get anything done with this. No, trying his best. Just trying to create an opening for those two Reapers to go into the main base and potentially get some damage done. Now, but he, he is getting a Cyclone over here. Um, both sides are, in fact. We have one medevac coming out on, on this side. I don't see anything being made air-wise yet for innovation, but I think that's because the tech lab is being made on the starport. I think you're right about that. Uh, wait, I is that a second is. tech lab? Yeah, he's getting two tech labs. Okay. okay. Interesting. Yeah, relatively mirrored stuff here to start things out. Just the medevac really the main difference. Medevac versus a raven. We, we do have a lot of these uh, two-base scuffles that go down. 
you know, depending on what units you have set up that you've made and what they've made, sometimes you can get some kind of tactical position where you can come in there and try to uh, crack them wide open. I do like Innovation's double Reapers just down here in case that push does come out, and I think that push is happening now. Maybe those Reapers can go inside the main and try to kill some workers. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting push actually here from Bunny. Six Marines and a Medivac, a Hellion, two Reapers on the ground, and a Cyclone. So there is a lot of micro potential here. Keep in mind that he can dodge the lock-ons from Innovation Cyclones here with his Medivac. So the micro potential here for Bunny is quite high. Attack coming in. We'll see if an auto turret gets dropped. Grenade actually very good. There are a lot of Marines going down. Siege Tank going to try and get in position here on this ramp. But Bunny just going to skirt around it here on the south side of this base. Out of range of that Siege Tank navigating this perfectly. Reapers now coming into the main base. We'll try to find some counter damage here for Innovation. Yeah, this is uh, interesting. It's it's <laughs> they, they actually haven't killed anything yet. Okay, the reverse kill. They like damage everything yeah. and they run away. <laughs> I also love that Raven just kind of like flying around like, do I drop a turret? Do I not drop a yeah, turret? Like yeah, nothing's well, actually dying here. It's not that It's not that bad. How much of a threat is this right now? Yeah, Innovation just going to sack these Reapers now. Might come into, oh, I thought he might try and suicide and potentially get one more SCB, but no, not going to go for it. And Innovation will stabilize back at home, but I do think Bunny got you know, slightly better trade there. He was able to kill a number yeah. of Marines, which... Now, anytime you can reset the bio count a little bit early in the game, it feels good in a lot of matchups. He's got um, a Raven now, so he could go for a disable on the tanks. I don't think he has enough Raven disables for the number of tanks that are going to be here. Um, but yeah, I thought it was overall a better engagement. I think Bunny got a little bit more done. I think that but, uh, Innovation's idea is kind of basic, but it's not bad. It's like just use the two Reapers to come in there and um, you know do that little counterattack, and that does slow you down. Yeah, and shore up the defense at home with Siege Tanks. And interestingly, Innovation oh. hasn't yet thrown down a third CC. So Bunny coming in now with his Reapers will be trading these out for SEVs and scouting information. Or actually, why well, didn't be able to get away? Look at that. One of these Reapers getting out alive. But, you know, the key takeaway here for Bunny is that Innovation is not playing three CC. He's going no. two base aggression. This is going to be heavy pressure, and I'm going to keep an eye on the minimap of the production tab. Okay, yeah, that third CC does go down, so potentially this is Innovation going to try to set up a soft contain and maybe do some damage here at the natural expansion of Bunny. But considering Bunny went for that third command center and Innovation started tank production so early, doubling for a moment their tank count now four to three in Innovation's favor, there's a lot of potential for damage here. So this is a little scary. Uh, notice that there are siege tanks set up here in the main. He's very well aware that, you know, this could be a huge drop coming in here. We're going to have some auto turrets set up, but you got to wonder, would it be better to have these Ravens back at home? Um, more medevacs are going to come down. They're headed southbound to merge up with the rest of Innovation's army. Auto turrets come in. Get some SCV kills. Auto turrets here for Bunny. So these Ravens will not be at home to defend, but they are getting a lot of counter damage, and actually these auto turrets fighting so much. Nine SCVs in total going down, and keep Damn. in mind, Innovation, his third command center is still underway, so that, that was wild. puts him in a little bit more of a, not necessarily oh. all in, but Bunny's he has to get like something so done. Ready for this. Oh, here we go. All right, attack coming in. Cyclones lock onto the medevac, but able to fully unload. Two siege tanks will siege here. The third one barely surviving, and all the Cyclones now dead for Bunny. Uh. But the supply is really telling the tell here, <laughs> tale here. Over, oh, I my think. God, I actually oh, completely no. missed. <laughs> This no, on I the just... left side of the screen, 27 SCVs going down for innovation. And army supply also massively in Bunny's favor. Bunny was just like so completely and totally ready for this. It's so funny. Yeah, I was so, I was like tunnel vision on the attack here in Bunny's face. I'm like, okay, this is not going great for innovation, but it was not the end of the world. And then I look at the left side of the screen, it's like 27 yeah, yeah. SCVs dead. No, it was yeah. funny. I was watching the supply go like down really fast, and I didn't see anything die. And I'm like, that's weird. And then like I look at the, <laughs> this way, I see like 25 dead SCVs on the map. Yeah, I think Bunny is gonna slowly be whittling away here at Innovation, and we might I be. Mean, I think this game's actually almost over. He doesn't have. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't have Medivacs. He can't get him out. <sighs> I didn't even notice that. They're just like stuck there. It's a rough one there for Innovation. I mean, All up right. until that point, it didn't feel like it was going too bad. I mean. I, I, yeah. You know, he went for a different build order choice. He opted for two base aggression instead of uh, the three base build order selection that Bunny went for. And I mean, we were thinking that he was going to be able to find some damage, but instead, Bunny with a great counter attack, not only with the Ravens, but also with a medevac drop, gets a ton done. Yeah. Yeah, that was. Uh, 
That was rough. That was rough. It was uh, just a moment where he was completely ready um, for those um, Medivacs to come in, just shut that all down. And yeah, the auto turrets, you know, we see it a lot, but you need to be ready to deal with auto turrets. I mean, that, that was nine SCV kills at the start before we then saw it spike back up to 25. Yeah, that Marine drop came in. I mean, the Ravens got the scouting information. There's pretty much nothing at home to defend. The yeah. innovation's rallying everything across the map, and so Bunny, with the confidence to go in there with a the drop, knows that he can defend back at home, especially with air su superiority, having those Vikings. He had Cyclones ready, Vikings ready. He had tanks sieged up in his main. The Cyclones didn't even get too much done, but it no. didn't matter. I mean, his they, defensive position. They could have gotten more done had he actually microed them, but yeah, yeah. It was kind of wild. We're going to go to Gresvin. Bunny just looking much more solid in TBT overall, I have to say. But, you know, it's only one game. It's really hard to get a litmus test of where somebody's at in a matchup from you know, such a small it's, sample size. So maybe here, Innovation can turn around a little bit on Gresvin. Yeah, maybe. I mean, you're right. I mean, this is why we make him play a best of three, is if you have one game that's a complete and total dumpster fire, you can recover in the next one. Uh, we're going to go to Gresvin now, guys. Again, the winner of this best of three gets that seventh spot in the round of eight, season one of the GSL Code S. Innovation. Beep boop. <laughs> Old memes never die. That's right. Mystery Gaming Bunny. Thank you, Androids. They really are taking all the jobs, man. Yeah, they are. <laughs> this gonna announcer gonna... job's going to be taken soon. Microsoft Sam's going to come in, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> submit his resume. Eventually, uh, StarCraft is going to be casted by that Microsoft paperclip. And <laughs> Chat <laughs> <It's gonna> GPT. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, thought, man. I never yeah. thought chat GPT trying You'll just see to. me on the side of the street, you know, so as, a, as a bum. Like, taste is what happened. I'm like, the robots <laughs> took my casting that's job. That's going to be the next AlphaGo, man. You guys are at home laughing at this, but then robots are somehow going to take your job of watching the show. Like, it's just going to be nothing <laughs> but robots left over. Oh, man. Robots are going to be playing the games. It's, we're, we're not even going to be allowed to be part of this. Robots will make their own games. will be played by robots and casted by robots and watched by robots. It's coming. That's actually an interesting little thought. I never thought of, you know, like some AlphaGo type engine. You know, obviously, it could play StarCraft. It has kind of yeah. a wonky style because it can micro like a god. Yeah, it's an yeah. artificial it, intelligence. It can click but... more than any mortal can, you know, click. I, I would want I would want to hear some artificial intelligence with like a Microsoft Sam voice try to cast a StarCraft two game and be like, well, the Protoss player is making something other than Blink Stalkers, which we all know if we micro perfectly, it beats everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> C clearly, we should also be replacing the players with robots. <laughs> Man, well, uh, this this game, I'm hoping we get a better performance from Innovation. I've never quite seen such a train wreck as, as what we saw back there. Yeah, kind of an interesting opening here from Bunny, going for a double gas, but a lot of um, prioritizing the mineral mining. I think we saw, I think, maybe three SCVs on gas in total. So after getting that factory up and the second Reaper, really not prioritizing that too much. Instead, opting for a little bit of a faster command center here and... Maybe this is totally standard in TBT. I admit, this is not my forte. This is one of the matchups that <laughs> I kind of scratch my head at a little bit, even after catching, casting a good bit of GSL. It's every time every time we get somebody who's like a player <laughs> of like just a certain race, and they come in, they're like, all right, well, this is the mirror matchup in the race I don't play, so this is always <laughs> a little confusing. Now, these are all pretty standard moves that they're doing right now. Uh, I guess we're going to have to see if this innovation uh, just try to two-base it again and power up, or, or is he going to go for a third command center here eventually? Because it was Bunny that basically got to have his cake and eat it. I love seeing the two Reapers go on and just, like, suicide kill each other, and the other two Reapers come in, and they see the dead bodies. They're like, yeah, we don't want to do yeah, that. I'd rather it's not live. Worth it. It's not worth it. I'd rather live. That Reaper has a family. <laughs> But um, yeah, largely, uh, largely mirrored builds again. 25 SCVs, one Hellion, one Reaper on each side. Innovation, a bit more aggressive here. Does catch oh, that him, grenade. Yeah, I was thinking for a second that Buddy might actually be able to chase him down. And Innovation gonna try and make up Ooh. his way up the ramp. Bunny with a tight move there, blocking in the wall. This is really impressive because he's basically not gonna let this leave. So uh, ultimately that scuffle is one. Um, by oh, Bunny, he, he got the ra or he got the Reaper too. I think. Yeah, he had yeah he had the Hellion chasing that Reaper. Hellion is just a little bit faster than a Reaper, um, so he kills that off. We have the medevac started. Some of these things might not seem that consequential, but you know we see a lot of TVTs that end on two bases. 
There's a lot of games where you, you know, we almost always see one guy come up to the other one and try to, you know, use the units they've got to have some little engage and see if they can come out on top. Yeah, and oftentimes those can spiral very quickly into one player just getting eliminated. Right. You know, it just takes a small upgrade advantage or a big positional advantage to suddenly have 16 Stim Marines in your opponent's natural mineral line with oh. no way of them getting there. And this is big. Yeah, that's can not... Can scan and actually get the kill? Luckily, Innovation has no. a boost. My goodness, could you imagine if he, like, uses that boost right for out of the gate and loses the meta back with all the Marines in it? All right, attack coming in. Siege Tank is by the mineral yeah. line. We'll be able to... You know, anchor the defense here a little bit as Bunny's gonna have to work his way away. And now, but innovation actually on the ag aggression. We're gonna oh try and chase this down. My God, oh, the, the drop of the drop! Kind of a chaotic battle here this as the second wild, cyclone man. now comes in. The, the siege what tank also was. This is insane. <laughs> the siege unseaged. It actually came out to join these forces. A lot of micro potential here for Bunny with two cyclones, but they're very low on HP. He has to control these perfectly. This is insane, man. You know, at right. the end of it, it's kind of an even trade. Yeah. Really wonky battle. Uh, third command center starts, by the way, right away on the low ground. Um, do we have a third CC? Is, oh, yeah, yeah that Bunny. is a third CC, right? Yeah, right in front of my face. Excuse yeah. me. Um, a little more than halfway down there for Bunny, so he does have the advantage on that side of things. Innovation with a slightly higher siege tank count as he did start that production a bit earlier. Seems like that's kind of where his headspace is at here in TBT. He had the same idea in game number one, prioritizing siege tanks over cyclones. Didn't work for him there. We'll see if he's able to find a way of leveraging a Siege Tank out lead into a lead in the game. So the game just continues on here. Um, it, one of the most heated little uh, back and forths we've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> it was very cool to see. Interesting battles that we've had early on in this one so far. Not only that odd scuffle, but also like the, the Hellions and the Reapers coming yeah, in the early yeah. game. It's. It's fun to watch. It's been pretty wild. Um, so we've got the tanks uh, and everything else moving out here towards the third base. There is a Raven and a Viking ready to intercept a move like the one that we're seeing here. If we do, in fact, see Bunny commit all the way into the main base. He's going to scan. He's going to see that there's nothing in here really to deal with him, but he's not going to... Oh, well, hold on. He goes right by. What? Three Vikings in total, in fact. And Oh, no. Those poor Vikings. These Cyclones going to make quick work of them. Auto turret does get dropped. Medivac even getting away here as Bunny's just getting... Really good trade yet again. And with nice micro, should be able to pull away and kill that Viking. Even gonna get some SCVs. Dude, this is insane how much damage is, is you know. Oh, he's gonna get the Raven. What? This is actually nuts. Innovation Dude. falling apart a little bit here. I mean, Whoa. keep in mind, those are the two Cyclones that barely survived that last scuffle yeah. in the middle of the map. I want to get a tattoo of those two Cyclones. <laughs> that was crazy. They did so much damage. That was wild. Um, Man, I've been listening. I've been watching GSL for like a decade. And you, you, you've, if you got all these tattoos that you say you got, you'd have sleeves like Todd right That's now. That's right, man. All these cyclones, <laughs> all these going Marines. up on my neck and on my face now. <laughs> these probes and I'd zealots. I'd be full SoundCloud rapper. Um, <laughs> damn, uh, that was crazy. Yeah, Bunny in a pretty commanding position now, I would think. I mean, a lot of these trades have been going his way. That first trade with the Hellion and the Reaper going his way, and then those cyclones getting immense value and if i'm not mistaken that medivac also survived so i mean just nothing but winning right now here for bunny as he's gunning to take that you know one of the last top eight spots here in gsl code s yeah bunny just playing so well i i know that like look losing the ravens a pretty big deal and and, and uh getting those vikings killed but really it's just like bunny looks so good right now um, Innovation could still win this game, but right now, I, Bunny is just seeming to be on point everywhere. Even the spread of Marines here to just kind of spot for anything else that might be moving out on the map. And the air lead right now for Bunny, he has four more Vikings and two more Ravens than Innovation, who right now only has these two medevacs on screen. Right. So it's not an ideal situation for him. I think if you're Innovation, you might want to try something a little bit more quirky. You know, maybe yeah. go for some drops, try to make the game a bit weird and play defensive back at home and potentially get some counter damage to equalize because uh, from this position, it's got to be uncomfortable. I mean, Innovation, he's a good player. He knows he's not in the best spot right now. Okay, well, Bunny is just coming out here. He's trying to intercept these small little squadrons of units. Uh, and just chase this away anywhere he can go, really. He, he can't quite pick up as easily here without the risk of uh, being... Oh, my God. Just he's everything. so good. Like, this is actually crazy. Like, he's just so on top of everything. I can't believe that medevac gets away, but 
you know, regardless, it's like he's playing perfectly. Yeah, Bunny just feels like he's catching every break right now and just snowballing this lead. I mean, and it seems like is innovation going to push? I saw those tanks on siege. I feel like if he pushes, he loses too. The army supply is 30 ahead right now. For I think Bunny. innovation probably going to have to reposition those tanks a little bit in a more spread out fashion to try and defend all the angles that Bunny can come from right now. And you can see innovation trying to keep Bunny a little bit more active here in the middle of the map because if Bunny actually kicks up full aggression on innovation's side, it can get dangerous very quickly, especially with that air superiority. Yeah, well, this is just, yeah, I was going to say, this is just a fight innovation can't have. There's more Marines here for Bunny. Um, he's staying out of range of the siege tanks. Quietly, we have a fourth base coming up over here. Actually, it's, excuse me, it's already up. It's mining from it right now. And morphing that into a planetary is Bunny as he's getting closer and closer to getting maxed here. Plus two upgrades underway for Bunny as well. Not sure exactly where Innovation is on that. Okay, so relatively mirrored. Innovation actually does have a bit of a lead there with the upgrade timing. And this is a nice break here for Innovation, catching this meta back with a handful of Marines. And Innovation gonna try and get aggress aggressive here on Bunny's side of the map. It looks like he wants to try and siege this third position, but Bunny, he is ready for it, man. Yeah, he is gonna stim up. He's coming over here with these Vikings too. All right, Armor Shredding Missile gets every single Marine. Two tanks get disabled as well, as now Bunny gonna try and siege on the high ground. Oh but my god, this is just so easily shut down. The yeah. Vikings starting to hit so many of these medevacs. I, I, I will say it is even right now in supplies. So. The push did get stopped, but Innovation had some really big siege thing hits on the bio ball there for Bunny now actually taking a Marine lead is innovation, so equalizing supply a bit, but these are some nice more moves coming out of Bunny. Look at that, gets two more siege tanks here with this drop. Well, he's gonna have to pick those up, and that's when it gets scary, because the Vikings are out. Yeah, gonna boost away There's for another, now. There's another push over here up at the top, but it does seem like Bunny's gonna be ready for that as well. We have the fourth base here for innovation. It's uh, freshly set up, and it is starting to soak up some resources. Two more command centers underway here for Bunnies, expanding in the top right while also, while also building a macro command center over by that fourth base. And you know, Innovation kind of fixating on this point of interest right here by the third base of Bunny gonna siege yet again. Both players sieging at the same time. Scan's gonna drop. We'll see who gets the better end of this trade as it looks like it will be Bunny. Yeah, he's scanning. He's starting to slowly win that tank war. It looks like he's gonna pick All up right. and go into the main. What has he got? A lot of turrets, some Ravens, Vikings coming in. Bunny stimming forward as well as the bio is dropping, but there's not a lot of siege tanks here in the main base either. And those medevacs, only three alive now. This is a precarious position for innovation. I mean, yeah, he is getting a lot of damage done, but if Bunny can find a way to breach this position, it's going to be hard for innovation to get out. Yeah, he's going to siege these tanks up on the low ground. If he can pick off maybe one or two more, he can then spill in with his own infantry. And that's exactly what he's going to do. One more tank remaining down here, as it looks like Bunny should be able to clean up the few remnants left over of that drop. Yeah, and that was some good infrastructure damage there by Innovation, but at what cost now is his army is only two medevacs, seven tanks, and a handful of Marines. Yeah, I mean, that's a big reset on his tank count. You've got to imagine that Bunny's going to be able to find some opportunities from here. Yeah, Bunny, just with overpowering Marine numbers right now, you got to think that he's going to be able to find some more damage. And actually, these two siege tanks there in the bottom left, Innovation's going to try and sprint down to defend them because he sees the Bunny as a scan. Yeah, Bunny, Bunny sent this medevac drop to try and go pick those off, but Innovation was fast enough with the reinforcements to at least retain those two siege tanks and try to keep the pressure up here at third base. And I got to give some credit to Innovation, man. He was up against the ropes there a moment ago, but he's been doing his best to fight his way back into it. Yeah, I mean, it's impressive how well Innovation's done when you consider, you know, how behind. He's basically been behind for almost all of this game, but he's gonna try to come up here once more. Now, if he picks up and goes into the main, there's gonna be Vikings there to intercept that. So, he, you know, Bunny already has an answer for that moment. There, I'm worried about this drop Tazos. There's no missile turrets in Innovation's main base. And if you look at the mini-map, you also see that he's basically parade pushing this. Missile turrets just now get dropped, but that's too little too late, as there's very few units here to actually defend against this three medevac drop. One siege tank will. Come in now, Bunny's gonna try and go in and snipe it, but no, just opting to play it safe. Wants to get out of here with these medevacs. 11 SCVs in total going down during all this. Infantry weapons at level three here for Bunny is finishing up a huge push is coming here um, from Innovation. It looks like uh, Bunny's gonna try to intercept it. Oh, that's so many siege tanks for Bunny over there by the third base. I actually didn't realize this, man. Right now, he's kind of split between his natural and his third and his fourth, but I'm not sure Innovation's gonna actually be able to leverage this advantage 
positionally here. Oh my oh god, no. a huge drop over here. 18 SCV is already picked up. Again, it's a planetary, so it's not that easy to break down, especially with the SCVs repairing it. The tanks are going to shove in once more. Yeah, those three medevacs getting so much work done on Innovation's side of the map. Innovation falling to 150 supply, down to 50 workers as well, as Bunny's still very close to max, despite taking all this damage over here by the fourth base. Yeah, he's going to pick up and leave. Um, and the truth is, Bunny just still has more. You know, he, he actually did not lose that command center, which was a pretty big deal. Probably a relief for him there. Yeah, and those three medevacs got so much damage done on Innovation's side of the map. We were kind of focused over in on the push that Innovation was doing at Bunny's fourth. But behind all of that, Bunny with some nice micro going in and dropping yet another base of Innovation, killing a good number more SCVs. Innovation just continuously up against the ropes, fighting for his life here. He doesn't want to go to that loser's match. He wants to try and force a deciding game here to increase his chances of making it to the round of eight. But Bunny, in a dominating position, going to try and intercept this army in the middle. We might have another weird situation here with Innovation coming down. And yep, here we go. Medivac's getting loaded up, going back into the main base. Missile turrets did get rebuilt. Uh, yeah, he's got some turrets. He does have some tanks over here as well. So this is not going to be the cleanest point of entry. Uh, meanwhile, we've got a big push uh, just going right up into the main, I guess. And I don't know, I guess the main itself is going to be security. He's got Marines and tanks over there. Yeah, kind of a big base trade situation going on yet again here. Innovation a little bit more of a defensive position here at the top of this ramp with those siege tanks and Marines actually stemming down to try to pick off a siege tank. Not sure if that one was worth it, but a relatively even trade overall. We'll get this Liberator too. Meanwhile, down in Bunny's base, losing a lot of critical infrastructure in the main, but the supplies really tell the tale right now. 160 yeah. to 120, and also innovation getting broken here in the main. Yeah, it seems like there might just be enough of, of everything to kind of sandbag progress and wiping this all out, where it looks like Bunny has basically gotten up into the main base itself. The tanks are going to be, was he just going to try to dive bomb on top of this? Is that the plan? I think he might be going for that. Or maybe coming around to the other side. But there's so many missile turrets, in fact. And yeah, he's just going to drop here in the natural expansion. But the siege tank shots are absolutely huge coming in from that starport. As Tasteless, I think we might be seeing GG. Yeah, I think we've got our first survivor here. It's going to be Bunny taking this as, there, we, there it is, GG. Uh, innovation going to go down to our final match. Uh, and Bunny, I think deservedly so, is going to move on here to the round of eight. Yeah, the seventh Five player. Five Terrans. Seventh player to qualify for the round of eight. Five Terrans and two Zergs in total as Innovation will fall into the Decider match. He will be facing right. one of our two Protoss players. And um, I got to say, though, Innovation, he looks pretty good so far today. You know? I mean, he's only yeah, been playing for about two good. months. It's about the same time that Staz has really been playing. And There's no shame in losing to Bunny. No, not at all. Okay, like, Bunny is in really good shape. Uh, I think we could we could kind of see a glimpse of uh, how great of a player Innovation is, but, like, Bunny just has the whole matchup down so much better, tactically so much better, too. Those moments with the Cyclones were insane. Yeah, the Cyclone drops were insane. The counterattacks also, both in Game 1 and Game 2, getting so much value there for Bunny yeah. is... He just had the right read on the situation. Innovation, you know, in the bad position that he was, couldn't really afford to maintain that level of aggression unless he kind of right. cut some corners back at home. Bunny recognizes it. He comes in with some drops, gets a ton of damage in, and rides that into a win. Yeah, and and that's that's it. Uh, and so we're going to go uh, to the interview in a second here and see exactly how Bunny's feeling. He has survived. and. Fingers crossed, guys. Two Protosses and a Terran left in the round of eight. Maybe we'll get one Protoss moving on. Congratulations, Bunny. It was not an easy matchup for you today. It was hard to know where exactly innovation was going to be at today. But you're, with your decision making and all your micro, you were really on point. How are you feeling? So, it, obviously, we all know Innovation had taken a long break, but his play style hasn't really changed. He is still very good. Personally, it was a little bit easier than I expected. He says all the matchups today were kind of like that. Yeah, we could kind of feel that while we were casting, you know. A lot of our biggest players went to the military. You were at the semifinals before. So anyways, how far do you think you could make it now? 
over, but so by now, man, it's okay. It's okay. If innovation can gain his own for old firm pretty quickly, I think that this season is going to be my opportunity to really show how great I am. You seem to be very proud about your skills lately. You had some very aggressive moves on the map back there. So throughout the games, uh, I've been getting pretty hyped on my micro. I've gained the confidence. Um, I'm just getting a lot of confidence overall against my opponents. We might be having a little bit of an audio hiccup here. He had a huge lead um, for a little bit back there. How did you manage to turn that game around? I was holding back and trying not to be too aggressive. When my command center got destroyed earlier, I tried not to. Um, uh, they're talking about the PVT, by the yeah. way. I said, once I get my ghosts out, I'll be able to turn this around. And so with the ghosts, I was able to cheese him out. <laughs> so he made it out of the group first. We've also started some donations. Fans have donated uh, to the prize pool. Any words you want to say to the fans? Even though GSL has shrunk a little bit, I still feel nervous every time I play. I hope I can be able to see my fans in the venue, which means I have to get at least to the final four or the finals. So that's my goal right now, to see all of my fans in person. Well, congratulations once more. He says thank you. And uh, there you have it. Yeah, another Terran player advancing. Bunny playing really well today. Looked very solid, I think. Yeah. He has a good chance of making it to the top four here in this GSL. Yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, look, he looks great. I'm happy for him. I'm not thrilled we have this many Terrans. Uh, we're now yeah, going to go to a Protoss versus Protoss. It's going to be Creator versus Classic. It will be our last Protoss versus Protoss. Yeah, the only one this, and the this last. Is it. This is the only one and the last. <laughs> also, no ZDZs in this tournament, man. If you're going to have another Protoss versus Protoss, you need to at least have two Protosses in the tournament. We know the best we could get is one. So, uh, fingers crossed. Even if you're a Terran player, even if you're a Zerg player, you want to have all three races, right? Yeah, it makes it more interesting, man, especially if you're yeah. laddering at home. You want to know how to play yeah. ZVP. You want to know how to play TVP. Yeah. But So, we'll see what happens. But innovation's looking pretty good. Um I'm not sure if our Protoss players are going to be able to beat him, man. Innovation, he's looking like he's getting into yeah. his old form way faster than I was expecting. I think if someone's going to take it, it's going to be classic. But we'll see, man. Creator's been in good shape. He did not have a, a great first two games, but, you know, he looked amazing last year. Yeah, he did. Consistently one of the best Protoss players in Korea. All right, guys, we are going to go to a short break. When we get back, our losers match, the only PvP here in the GSL Code S. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you soon. Questioning everything Many nights Tossed and turned Hearing all the voices scream So loud I've been in I've been out Shouldering a heavy load I've been tough I've been torn Restless in my soul Morning light Please shine through It always makes me whole Shine down
wipe away the tears The time has come to conquer all my fears The time has come to trust what I believe The time has come to take a chance on me같은 하루에서 답답함을 빼면 더 청량해질 거야. 제로처럼. 우리 없어도 되는 건 빼고 살자. 칠성 사이다 제로. But I really want a Protoss, at least one Protoss in the round of eight. Please. please. I'm begging you, StarCraft gods. Please. For ire. <sighs> um, Lord knows we need it. Yeah, man. Um, so Creator and Classic are going to be duking it out here. Um, I don't really know who takes this one, to be honest. I mean, I haven't really had a lot of exposure to PvP as of late. You know, yeah. I, my, my last StarCraft II cast was obviously doing IEM, which... Which did end up uh, as a, um, uh, what do you call it? A, a, a PV, uh, sorry, TVT finals, of course. So, like, it's been a lot of TVTs. Yeah, a lot of TVTs. Going to get more of that here today. Yeah. Or not today, excuse me, but in GSL Code S. In the weeks to come. The weeks to come. In the week to come, I guess. And then we'll see what ha what the finals actually uh, look like. But, yeah, I mean, Creator, look, as of late, he has been more impressive. But Creator is, like, 
I mean, there's a reason why he's one of the players that has not won a, a GSL yet, is he's very hot or cold. Yeah, hot and cold he, is the perfect way to describe you know, him. He has these moments where, like, he looks like a genius. He seems to have, by the way, maybe the biggest range of builds out of everybody that's here. Yeah, he, like, he knows cool, so much. Yeah, he had some cool builds today in his first match. Like, that 6DT yeah. blink into the main base so early while taking a third was something I haven't seen before. Really like classic. Was a lot of fun to watch. Getting lower and lower on the, uh, every time we see him in the picture. Like, he's getting further and further <laughs> down. Can. Eventually, we're just going to see the top of his head, like, just his hair. <laughs> um, it's like Benjamin Button. He's also getting younger eventually. Yeah, <laughs> he's like a baby he's sitting there in the chair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, we're going to go to Agent Cistern for this PvP, guys. Creative versus Classic starts now. Four in five seconds from now. There we go. There we go. Club NV, Creator. I like that jacket. Yeah, it is a nice jacket. Must be his team's. Classic. I think you're right. I think he is getting Look lower. how tall that door is behind him. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, all right. So let's see what our player is up to do here. I'm wondering whether we're going to see any proxies here in game number one. Actually don't have. Okay, it is creator there in the bottom left. Didn't see it there on the prompter. Who? Who is who in this PvP mirror? Will be Creator sending out the Gateway Scout. Both players opting for a second gas. And Creator with a Scout looks like he's just beelining there to Classic Space. So nothing too crazy this early. Both players also going to throw down their second Gateway Cybernetics Core. And I, I think it's from then that we'll start to see things really start to kind of diverge. I think so, yeah. I mean, we want to see is there going to be any kind of major deviation here. Um, and right now, I mean, you know, they're just basically both making the same thing, so it's hard to really call it. We'll see if it's going to be like two stalkers or, you know, two adepts or something like that. We do have a probe that's now parked down here at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Um, um, which, uh, to me, tells me he's probably going to hide something down here. So he's going to make a pylon. Let's see what the tech is going to be down there. Could be a um, Twilight Council, maybe even DT tech. It could also be Classic just throwing down a second pylon because Creator went for this probe scout early. Because Creator, he's going to be counting the pylons in the main base of Classic, right? right. He's like, okay, where is your second pylon? You don't have the main base. There must be some proxy aggression coming at me. Right. And then there isn't. So this could just be him trying to get in the head of Creator. Well, we'll see if he decides to use it. But right now, that probe just in the middle of the map, far away from that pylon. So two stalkers are coming out now for Creator, where we have a stalker and a sentry. Um, you know, the sentry is usually just used to make hallucinated phoenixes and scout with them. Uh, try to figure out what exactly is going on there. Yeah, and the Classic is just going to be doing that. No proxy tech at that pylon. Down at the 6 o'clock position, this probe now coming into the main base. And, you know, he also waited for kind of an awkward time now coming in. This is when the pi the probe would be coming into the main base of Creator, say if it built like some crazy fast tech, right? So right. some level of mind games going on right now. And you also see, I think that's Creator on the map. Yeah, it is. Just trying to scout around almost everywhere on the top side because he knows there's a pylon missing. He just wants to find it. Isn't going to be able to. And I'm liking this from Classic. He does this and throws down a Nexus. Yeah. Uh, quick expand there. We have two more sentries actually coming here as well. Um, so here's the hallucinated oracle uh, from Creator that's going to come up and try to see what's going on. But I think for now, we're not going to have that much going on. I know PvP can be a very cheesy, crazy matchup, but I think this one to start things off really isn't. No. Uh, they're basically both just trying to safely get another base up here. Should be relatively straightforward here, at least in the early game. Both players going for, you know, relatively mirrored builds. I mean, even now, both going for the Twilight Council. Yeah, two well, this stalkers, is great. Two centuries. We're going to have more of a macro um, PvP, which I, I'm very down to see. PvP is funny because it can be kind of hard at pro levels to get to like three bases and four bases because there's so many ways. Just by the nature of the cybernetics core giving you so many different tech options, there's so many ways the game can end early, but this game's certainly not going to be one of them. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit more vanilla here for both these players. And keep in mind that, you know, this is an elimination match. Loser of this best of three, they are out of the GSL for this season. Warner will go on to play Innovation in an attempt to make it to the round of eight, but there's a lot on the line. So you know, playing nice and conservatively here in game number one, just trying to feel, feel things out, get a good read on, you know, how your macro play stacks up against the opponent. 
can be a pretty good approach here in the best of three format. Yeah, quiet start. Blink is going to be coming here. Uh, I do like the forge here from Classic. You know, if, if you're not going to be trying to end the game right away, you do have to get a forge. Yeah. Uh, or those upgrades will just win you the game in the long run. Um, so if we don't see a forge coming here from Creator, then I think he has to attack, right? You would think so. Or he has to find some other way to get an advantage by spending resources. And so it looks like for him right now, that's going to be going for a faster third base here than Classic. And I mean, this does lead down a road. The later, the later and later that he delays that forge, the wider the gap is going to be between the upgrades and the bigger the window that Classic might have to take advantage of later right. on in the game, should he opt to go for a timing. But with a faster expansion, Crater's economy should be a little bit better, at least here in the mid game. Yeah, so far so good here. Third base coming. Um, and, and we're, uh, yeah, I gotta say, one of the you know, quietest PVPs I've casted here in GSL. We've had so many more explosive PVPs to start things off. Two Adepts are gonna shade forward here, and two Adepts can easily one-shot a probe, and that's exactly what we're gonna see happen over here now. Yeah, so good number of probes going down here. Classic picking up three already. Now shitting into the main base. Gonna try and run away from these stalkers and sentries. I guess not. Well, didn't have too many places to go anyway. Blink will be finished. And that adept is gonna go down. Creator with a nice shield battery wall in there. The, the top of the ramp did not allow the adept to get into the main base. So plus one attack's almost done. We have Zealot Charge coming here as well as having some more gateways. Um, and it looks like Creator's gonna come out and, and try to attack in over here. This is actually more stalkers right now for Creator, but the shield battery is gonna be pretty handy in balancing this out right now for Classic. Yeah, it's a tough position to attack into unless you're setting up for something like this. Setting up for a attack here at the natural expansion with these two adepts, getting more damage than Classic did earlier in this match. I mean, five probes going down is nothing to scoff at. Yeah, a lot of lost mining time here as well, as that last Adept is finally uh, shot down. And if Creator hadn't gone for that poke with these Stalkers and Sentries, Classic probably would have been in a better position to actually intercept it. So they're just applying a little bit of pressure, creating an opening there at the natural expansion and you know, compounding this economic lead a little bit now for worker advantage here in the favor of Creator. But I am concerned about the upgrades, Tasteless, because there's no plus one for Creator, and Classic is already starting plus two. This makes me think that we're going to see an all-in. I mean, yeah, it, I mean, it kind of has you, to be, right? If you don't have a Forge, then this has to be an all-in, right? I mean, it's there is not like a game that, you know, that goes on for a long time that's like, oh, no, you don't get upgrades in that matchup. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's, it's just It just isn't a thing. I mean, having all of your units be stronger in attack or, or, or in having armor, Yep, only four gases here for Creator as well, so just really piling on the gateways and focusing on these minerals and also cutting probes a bit. Keep in mind that he did have that four worker lead a moment ago. Now Classic actually has the worker lead, so a fair number of probes have been cut. Is Creator going to be looking to make a killing blow here against Classic on three bases? Classic morphing in his first Templar will be trying to get some Archons out to help deal with these Zealots, plus two ground weapons, probably only about halfway done, so He's gonna have to make do with just plus one for now, and here we go. Attack coming in. I mean, this is a lot right now. Those zealots are gonna tear down that battery and start hitting workers, but the rest of the army is gonna be clashing right up here around these force fields of Blink Ford, but another warp in now comes from uh, Creator. Yep, a couple more force fields in the bag. Actually, no, Sentry only has one energy for one of them, is finally those zealots do get cleaned up at the natural expansion of Classic. A couple of probes did go down, but those or Immortal anchoring the army here it doesn't feel like Creator has much more than these Stalkers, so he's getting a ton of value through this Immortal. More Zealots are going to get warped in. If Cre Classic can go find a way to just try and balance this out and stabilize, I think he's going to be fine. I mean, look at the army supplies. He's he, actually ahead. Yeah, I feel like Classic's already almost won this game. He's doing a really good job with just not letting this Immortal die off. Oh. It's finally picked off in the back. There's already a second Immortal over here. But so many Stalkers are going down to take out of these Immortals. And behind this, Creator has really nothing. He's been cutting probes. Yes, he was able to kill 12 probes of Classic, but he doesn't even have a forge. If he, I don't even think he made one in transition. No, it's just now going down. So. Templar Archives only just now starting. Forge only just now starting. Classic finally has plus two ground weapons. I think Classic with this Warp Prism just pushes across the map and kills him. And oh man, oh, four Zealots. God, there it is. Yeah, that's just it. Creator that's... knows he has no chance of staying in this one as Classic with some nice defense there. Able to hold on.
Yeah, I mean, it was just classic playing a more straight up game and uh, creator trying to snowball this in a moment that just didn't really make a lot of sense. Is it an exercise bike behind the chair? It does look like it, yeah. It is an exercise bike. Yeah. Or is it one of those stepper things? It's actually hard to tell with the resolution. It's it hard could to be say. like one of those, what do you even call them? The thing is like the sta staircase machine? It's not a staircase machine. Yeah, I know. Those are massive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but it's. Yeah. That's me at the gym for like five minutes, and I'm like, this is so hard to do. <laughs> um, it might be the one that you, you, you do like you do like this. You know what I'm talking elliptical. about? Elliptical. You, you're so fit, tasteless. Yeah, yeah, Are you a not gym fit. rat, tasteless? Are I, you bulking right now? Is that what's going on? No, I mean, if I take my shirt off, I look like cookie dough that's been dropped in a barber shop. <laughs> uh, but I do know my <laughs> workout <laughs> machines. Yes. <laughs> Picking up everyone's, everyone's beard and shaving. Yes, yes. It's just <laughs> All the stray hairs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I do know my machines. I do know my machines, and I don't. But I don't know which one uh, that was uh, from Creator. I'll tell you, man. Creator's not looking good today. No, it's been a little bit shaky. I, I like the like, kind of that was an anti timing. It was. I mean, you could tell that he was kind of keying in on going for that. I mean, that was the game plan. It wasn't a spur of the moment thing where he's like, the whole okay. whole game led up to that. Yeah, it was very deliberate. It was deliberate. He's like, I'm not going to go for a forge. I'm just going to go for this timing. You know, feign a third base kind of. You know, just saturate it in minerals, cut probes, and then just go with a Hail Mary play with all these zealots. And it didn't work. But frankly, it didn't feel like Classic was doing anything special to defend that. You know, it's just Creator kind of came in and Classic was like, OK, this is the position we're in. I guess it's kind of fine. <laughs> yeah. And he holds on there on Sister. And so Creator, a little bit of a shaky start here today. If I'm not mistaken, 0-3 so far in maps as he's looking to come back here against Classic. Grasvin going to be map number two. That's already loaded up. We're ready to go. Good luck, Creator, because right now Classic is looking primed to escape the next match here in the, in the group of D. <laughs> not quite a group of death, yeah. but it is a group it's of a D. It's a group of D. It's not really the death group. Club NV, Creator. Maybe a number of years ago, this could have been the group of death. I mean, innovation yeah. and Classic, that's... Those are some heavy hitters Classic. from way back when, you know? Yeah. That's an exciting room he's in. Um, all right, so we've got the gateways here. Are we going to have double gate openings? We had a very slow uh, start for that uh, last PvP, like nothing really happened. They both got up to three bases and didn't really engage with each other. Yeah, there was a little bit of mind games with Classic proxying his second pylon, but it was just to try and throw Creator off, which I, I don't think it did too much. Creator still went for the fast expansion. He still went for, I think it was two Stalkers and three Sentries, so he didn't deviate from his, you know, macro opening. And um, I I'm wondering if we're going to see more of the same here in game number two. I'm surprised that we didn't get anything truly aggressive at all there to start things out in this best of three because PvP can be quite explosive at times. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm used to these crazy PvPs happening where it's like, you know, they're at each other's throat and someone's going to die off one base or two base. The number of times we've seen, like, someone just push a, a, a two base Protoss on one base has been incredible, but, you know, these, these trends kind of change over time so maybe we're gonna have a passive one to start this off again who knows it could be the way that meta is shifting a little bit in pvp would be hard to tell considering we don't get too many PvPs yeah, we don't get in the current state of, of the game right now yeah and again innovation is waiting for the winner uh, of this of these two innovation you know historically leading up into this been a little bit struggling here in tvp since his return to starcraft 2 but you know Winning his first match against Protoss today, going into what will be finally be the decider match. I think he's going to be feeling a little bit more confident against either of these guys. Yeah, I think so. And I think Tasis were shaping up for what should be another relatively passive game. We do have a Twilight Cancel getting thrown down here from Classic, but I'm wondering if that's because he anticipated this pylon block coming in. He knows he yeah. can't throw the Nexus timing down when he wants to, so he's like, okay, I'll, I'll just you know start my tech a little bit earlier. And he's actually coming across the map right now with these two Stalkers. So I think he wants to try to basically draw this away. If he can keep the pylon alive, I mean, you're just never going to get your Nexus up there. Keep in mind, Crater's already started his Nexus. So this is kind of a cool situation we're seeing here. Um, yeah, a bit different. 
a bit different. I was thinking that Classic would try and take down that pylon a little bit more rapidly here to get that Nexus started, but instead opting for four Stalkers and, yeah, now going for a Dark Tatis. Shrine. So. Very cool. Okay, I'm not sure if this was the plan from the get-go or if this was a response to just not being able to go for that Nexus as quickly. I, I, think, I think it's a response. Yeah, you got to be careful, though. Be. you got to be, be careful when you, when you do this. Like, if you block them from expanding, you have to be ready for the fact that they may just hit you with something, you yeah. know? I mean, PvP is oftentimes very much a fluid matchup in that way where you kind yeah. of have to roll with the punches and, you know. Oh, he's going to get this probe over here. Oh, he is. But luckily, there is a probe in position here to drop down a shield battery. So only confirming the natural expansion doesn't seem much more than that as these four stalkers start to pressure. And actually hallucinating two stalkers there for Creator. One of them took Ooh. full brunt of damage there. And that's going to be Creator holding on and buying time for that shield battery. I mean, four stalkers against three, it could have gone... Classic sway, but some pretty clever play there from Creator. Hallucinating two stalkers. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think it's a really smart uh, move here. Creator's going to pause. Lag. 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 Yeah. Hopefully this gets resolved uh, pretty quickly. Yep. My tie is getting all twisted up. Oh, is What's it? What's going on here? Yeah, I haven't been looking at the prompter too much, but... We're okay. Minus, now. We're yeah. back. We're, We're all right. Good. Um, all right, so we're going to see if they can fix that. I don't know what the deal is, but... Yeah, hopefully it won't be too long of a break. But, um, you know, so far things shaken out in a pretty interesting way. I like yeah. that we're seeing this uh, DT play come in from Classic. And Creator going for that macro expansion kind of makes things a little bit less parallel from game number one. So, you know, the onus is on Classic, I think, to try and get a little bit of damage done with this faster tech because he's going to be a couple workers behind. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. I don't know what what to make of this situation with the pause here. Hopefully they can get that sorted. Because if it's online, it's like it's like well, how do we even? It's like BattleNet. You know what I yeah. mean? Like it's not it's not a live event. So I don't I don't know what to do. Yeah, um, I think our admins are talking with the uh, players right now on yeah. Discord chat to try and sort this out and get it alleviated as quickly as possible. Yeah, I mean, um, we're basically having these stalkers come in and harass at the entrance, and, and the idea is that he's trying to generate the threat of the stalker push when really it's going to be DTs coming up next. Yeah, and also, I mean, going for those four stalkers early, you just kind of want to get any value you can yeah. out of them, right? So, um, seems like we do actually have a little bit of lag, so delay might go on a little bit longer, but um, I, I do want to point out, I mean, it's such a small thing, but Creator going for that hallucinated stalker when it was a three versus four. Very cool. And um, the stalker, like, it died. It, it tanked the full brunt of the yeah, damage. Yeah. So that no, bot... it was really good. It was one of the better usages of uh, Hallucinate yeah. that we could see in the early game. It's always fun when you get to see someone use Hallucination in a cool way like that. Yeah, yeah well, I think we had a lot of high hopes for Hallucination. Obviously, we all remember when uh, Huck did that to Hydra. Yeah, I, my, I was thinking yeah, about uh, that, actually. I thought we were going to see more of that, and instead it kind of became just used to make Phoenixes and Scouts. And Scout, excuse me. Yeah, occasionally you can do it in some situations. Like, you can hallucinate some stalkers if you're not ready to intercept a... Like, say you have a handful of stalkers in your main base and Terran's going to come mm -hmm. in with a drop. You know they're going to come in with a drop. Right. You want to scare them away. You can hallucinate maybe one or two batches of stalkers and be like, okay, I have six here. Right. You do not want to drop me. Go back. Or you hallucinate an immortal in a push or sometimes we mm -hmm. see hallucinated archons. But, yeah, um, it's not used as much anymore. And I think it's probably because, you know, Sentry just overall, we don't see too much action and... And uh, no. Protoss matchups these days, except for PvP. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have a, a much of an integral role there. Uh, they're still chatting. We're gonna we're gonna notify you guys if they um, figure this out. But yeah, I'm not sure. You know, I mean, most of the time, if there's an issue, we're at we have the players at the studio, so we can yeah. like, switch out the PC. We have a system, but like, I'm not sure how exactly this gets handled. Yeah, at least uh, so far, you know, in GSL Code S, switching to this online format through the round of 16 and the round of 8. We really haven't had too many it's hiccups It's been pretty like seamless so far, yeah. Play. And actually, okay, it looks like we're, we're going to be getting back into the game. Should be jumping into that in just a second as action has resumed. Oop. And we have another pause. Oh, I see. So I think you so guys... So they actually... I think they want to check. Oh, they're saying it's... Yeah, they're saying it's really bad. Okay. Says creator. Hmm. 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 I, I, I wonder what, <sighs> what the situation might be. I mean, there is... The opportunity that you know these players can just oh yeah it might be pc it might be pc lag it might be server lag we're not sure exactly what the yeah. situation is i mean this is something that we can <coughs> do in me. starcraft 2 like maybe maybe they quit the game and we have them resume from replay which right actually on the prompt it seems like that's going to be what we're going for so it'll be probably a minute or two before we get back into that game and yeah i think so they'll pull that back up and then hopefully the lag's gone yeah 
Uh, so they're both going to reboot their PCs now. At least we've been told that. Yeah. And um, then we'll hop back into the game. Yeah, hopefully we should be able to get back into it. And, man, it's it's nice actually having this feature here in StarCraft 2 where you can so rejoin like this. I don't think God. any RTS really – just StarCraft Brood War? No, no, no. There's nothing like that. Nothing like this? Yeah, because I, I – yeah. You know, I play a little bit of Age of Empires 4 for fun, and that one also, you, you, you can't, can't you just jump back into you, the, yeah. You can't even pause. <laughs> it's pretty. You can't pause? You can't pause. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty bad. That's it's weird, pretty bad. Man. I mean, the technology isn't there yet, but for StarCraft 2, I mean, we're so spoiled well, being able to with, play The thing with StarCraft. so many RTSs is, like, when they, when they dropped Age of Empires, like, it didn't have a ladder. Yeah. Like, that for, for me, I'm like, I, I have to have a ladder. Yeah, that, the same That's way. where I, I, I love laddering. I love getting a coffee. And just playing against faceless other people that are also competing. Enable. And trying to move up in my rank and then kind of seeing where I'm at. Am I bad? Am I lower than I thought? Is it possible I can get, like, you know, top 1,000 or uh, 500 or, or 100? You know, you know whatever. Um, but, yeah, there's so many good features yeah. in StarCraft 2 that, like, other games still don't have yet. I mean, StarCraft 2, it's an older game now, but I'm pretty sure everyone that watches GSL at some point was you know playing and you're on the ladder and you you like you like seeing that incremental progress as you're advancing right. through the leagues or through your divisions and then you know sometimes yeah you, you will fall back a little bit and you'll be like okay I have to reassess what can I do better let me watch some of these pro streams let me download some of these replays right get an idea of how I can improve and that's such an important part of RTS and I mean just StarCraft two fans in general we're so spoiled with We've actually the, all, the engine man. that we have. Being able to resume yeah. from replay, being able to pause the game. That's one of the exciting things about, uh, you know, the upcoming Stormgate uh, yeah. game coming out is they've made their own engine for it. It should be a lot Because if you're going to have a good RTS game, you have to have an engine um, built. Uh, apparently, you know, anything where you have that many objects moving at once, it's why a lot of, when you play a lot of other RTS games, I'm sure that you've experienced the same thing that we've experienced where it's like it doesn't feel right. Yeah. The way things interact, and it's because if, if it's not – designed well enough to have that many objects all flowing and moving around it comes out kind of feeling weird pathing can get strange or attack moving can sometimes be strange or, like or, or units overlap they're like little sprites and they they stack on Ooh. top of each other um i haven't run into any rts games with that <laughs> that does not sound I've played pleasant a couple i've played a couple so they're going to yeah. try to resume i think they're going to test it i don't know that we're going to throw uh put it on camera yet but they're going to count it down and then see if this is still hiccuping yeah, uh, so like... as a reminder, we do have stalker pressure to try to force an immortal out here from uh, creator when, in fact, uh, Classic is going for DTs. Okay, and the action resumes. No pauses yet, so I I'm guessing that, you know, with the restart, we're able to reset here and progress through this game as we kind of try to get our bearings a little bit again. Dark Strike oh! is completed here, and actually, oh, no, Wallen. This is one of those things that can also happen with a pause. Yeah. Is you know, it's hard to be immediately at the ready yeah, for a reaction like this. To center yourself. And there's, there's a Warp Prism following up the Immortals. So the first ET oh coming boy. in here for Classic has the potential to get a lot of damage done. Oh, and he's going to wrap all the way around here. Yeah, it almost feels like Classic is trying to bait Creator away. And, okay, he sees the shades. He sees the, the, the blur of the DT here. Force fields the ramp. A couple of probes going down. Warp Prism gets canceled at half completion. Pro, uh, Observer now halfway done, but this is a lot of damage here on Creator, and at the very least, Classic equalizes, and I mean, from here, it feels like he has a really good position. He, he's, he's in good shape. He's going to get more gateways. We do have a War Prism that can be used for a push. I think uh, that's... But the DTs can also counter right back in. Mm -hmm. this is the scary thing is when you have um, DTs in your base, is like, you need to at least get two Observers, which takes a, a lot of extra time. Yeah, so I think after this War Prism, we will probably see another Observer made. And then Creator's going to try to use that back at home to defend and hit a timing with a Warp Prism Micro with the one Immortal that he has. He has a good number of sentries, good number of force fields. I think two in the bag right now on one sentry. The other two sentries slowly gathering up enough energy for one force field. But oh, no, Tasteless. Oh. The Warp Prism gets caught by Classic Stalkers. Oh, my God. It gets God. taken out. It's a disaster. No reinforcements here for Creator, who is currently down by 12 workers. Classic actually feeling confident enough to throw down a third expo. Yeah, I think he's going to have to cancel that third expo. Yeah. It's going to be an unfortunate moment to lose this Archon. Yeah, this Archon does get caught in the middle of the map. We'll be able to make it all the way back to the shield battery. Overcharge will get popped to keep that Archon alive. Focus Fire coming in. Probe's actually getting pulled here as Classic is counterattacking here at Creator's side of the map. All right, we blink forward. We try to take down this Immortal, but there's only a handful of Stalkers here, so a lot of counter damage coming in. But keep in mind, this attack is also happening on Creator's side of the map. 
Yeah, I think that this game is almost over. A lot of workers are going to be picked off here, but there's so many stalkers right now um, for Classic here, killing so many of these uh, probes. Yeah, I'm not sure Creator's going to have an answer for this. Look at this economy. I don't know if there's an Immortal in production, but he desperately needs one as Classic finally stabilizing back at home. Has a ton of Link Stalkers right here. One Immortal now in production, but look at the mineral and the gas bank here for Creator. Almost no mining. The War Prism gets picked off again, and that's going to be it. Classic wins 2-0 over wow. Creator and will face Innovation in the final match of Group D. Beautiful game there from Classic. And uh, yeah, let's do this, man. Yeah, that was hype. Classic versus Innovation. That was a great game. Um, love the DT play. I love that he gets out, too. He doesn't, like, overextend. He's like, no, there's going to be Observer here. I got to run. Yeah, that was a lot of fun there, man. Yeah. Yeah. Very Sad cool that it's going to be our only PvP here in this tournament, but it was a Hope good one. Hope you enjoyed that matchup. <laughs> You're going to have to wait until Season 2 See you again in a couple year. months with yeah. another PvP. <laughs> yeah. You can rewatch that one a couple times if you're trying to learn that matchup because we're not giving you any more than that. Yeah. Um, and so now it's going to be Innovation versus Classic. I think this is a great match to end this on. I hope that Classic advances. That would be the dream. It I think would be the dream. I mean, Classic, he's been trying to put it together for a long time since coming back from military service. And Innovation also, you know, yeah. fresh off military service, only been competing again for a couple of months. Would also be a great story for him to make the round of eight. But yeah. you know, just as a fan of the game, I, I love to see all three ra races represented. Guys, we're going to go to a break. We come back, our final best of three. You don't want to miss it. Will we have a Protoss move on or not? We'll find out soon.
Carolina. A fair warning for anybody with hair on them. You can't stop me and get sloppy to bear on them. They try to put me with mad looking at tears on a mish fight. Yeah, so incredible. When you're this good, go let them know. Yeah, so incredible. When you're this good, go let them know. They ain't never hear bad like this. They ain't never seen a man like this. Go let them know. They ain't never hear bad like this. They ain't never seen a man like this. Go let them know. Uh, flow's incredible. Look at them anxious. You can't go against the creed like Jonathan Major. Gonna see it to believe it. Come do me a favor. Look at the paper. Peep in the cadence. Life here, then it's gone. You ain't know it's a vapor. Gotta travel, carry on. Bring your people to make us. See the world cast pearls quick. Trying to be famous. Be the quiet in the room. People know when you're dangerous. Uh, big in the stool that never assume it. Uh, hair in the room is keeping them moving. Uh, trying to critique by saying you're losing. Wanna bring up the past till them business is booming. That day won't define me. Knowing where to find me. Wrapped in the wings of the mighty. So many ups wanna try me. Seeing what I got is a lot. And the block kind of timely. I'm gone. Yeah, so같은 하루에서 답답함을 빼면 더 청량해질 거야. 제로처럼. 우리 없어도 되는 건 빼고 살자. 칠성사이다 제로. 
I think Classic looked like he was in pretty good shape. I think he did look like he was in better shape than Creator. Creator really just wasn't able to bring anything to the table today. Yeah, I feel like he had some interesting builds, especially against Innovation. It just didn't go his way. And yeah, yeah he, he is, I mean, you, you talked about this before in the previous match. He's one of those players that's kind of hot or cold. And yeah, you know, right now, just kind of cold. He had a good run at IAM Kataviche, and I, I'm sure we're going to see him. I'm sure we're going to see much more Creator in GSL this year and all in tournaments around the world in StarCraft 2, right? Yeah. I mean, he's just so good. He is one of the best Protoss players just that's out there competing today. You know, like it's him, it's Hero. You got some foreign Protosses that are really good. We'll see more of him, but hopefully we'll see some more Protoss here. And they're out of eight as well as Innovation versus Classic. The map is loading up. Final match here of the day in Group Let's D. Let's go. Let's do this, man. Innovation. Beep boop. It's so stupid. I laugh at it every Beep, time, boop. man. <laughs> I get that air conditioner installed up there and that little plug. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll see that develop over the course of this GSL. Yeah, if he wins yeah. round Classic. of eight, there's going to be an air conditioner. There's That's right. Be. We're going to slowly see the rooms upgrade. As <laughs> <laughs> this uh, is just, I'm not going to ever get tired of talking about that shot of that guy's room. Yeah. What will be advances just to <laughs> talk about the room. I want to go more. like buy him some posters and be like, here, put this on your wall. Um, <laughs> Maybe we can start crowdfunding some, some interior right. design, yeah, yeah, some interior design consultation it, for these it, guys. It really, it's like a funny <laughs> thing with with uh, Korean streamers, because um, I, I actually do. You know, I, I, I click through Africa TV a lot. I look, I look at a lot of just Korean streams. A lot of the rooms they just don't have anything in there. Yeah, my room's also basic, but at least the lighting setup is generally good. You know, it's flattering. Yeah, yeah you got some cool lighting in there. My my big head kind of blocks everything behind me, so With it doesn't really big, matter. Beautiful brain in there. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. So these guys have been fairly even in the past. Um, innovation. I mean, you know, he looked good. Obviously, Bunny kind of gave him a run for his money, but uh, this should be a fun final best of three to see. You know, who's really on top right now. Yeah, frankly, a match that could have been you know a tournament finals years ago. In many international tournaments, these guys were at the top of their game. I mean, for Classic, especially around 2014, 2015, for Innovation, you know, before he went to military service, of course, was consistently one of the best Terran players in the world up there with Maru. And so it's nice to kind of have these old school players come back from military service, and at least one of them is going to make it to the round of eight. Yeah. And, you know, for, for Classic, yeah, he didn't just come back. He's been competing in StarCraft II for a while again, but... He really hasn't been able to return to championship form over the past couple of you know months and years, right? It's been yeah. a rough ride for him returning from military service, and so you know if he made it for the top eight, not not only would he be kind of breaking new ground for himself again here in the GSL and returning to that past self and maybe gaining some confidence along the way, but also you know keeping the Protoss hopes alive here. <laughs> One Protoss in top eight would be nice to have. Certainly better than zero. <laughs> there it is, the third command Dude, center. Dude, innovation, man. He's, he's, yeah. He hasn't changed. We were literally joking about this, like, off camera. I'm like, are you ready for him to make that third command center? And then he did <laughs> yeah. it. We're like, yep. All right. It's going to be Stargate the, here for Classic, too. The thing with innovation is, like, you can know what he's going to do, and he'll still beat you with it. He's so good at that. Yeah. I mean, truly, if you wanted, like, to have a, a build to just steal to try to pick up the game, probably just copy what innovation does and just get really good at it. Um, you know, he's he's made this work so many times before. Now, I don't know if the um, Protoss could scout that third command center and maybe decide to do some kind of aggression. I know we've seen success where the... Ooh, yeah. almost loses that adept. I know we've seen some success where players um, will, you know, go for the Blink Stalker and Blink into the main and, and do damage that way. Yeah, this time Classic's going to be often for the Phoenix, and I think... Uh most of the PVTs that he's won today, well, maybe only the only PVT that he's won today, has been on the back of this Phoenix into Colossus play, I think. And you know, he almost won that game three against Bunny. Just barely wasn't able to hold on against the SCV All-In when it came in. But so far, it has been working with, for him uh, with that map as the exception. <laughs> this is actually a really so funny stupid. interaction. I thought the second Phoenix was closer to being dumb. Surrounded with not. pylons when it lands. <laughs> <laughs> spend, spend 900 minerals uh, on yeah. building a wall. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just trap it in there. Yeah, and then when it's trapped in there, you size storm it. <laughs> <laughs> you take, <laughs> up, do take up the Templar. Yeah. Get a mothership. Yeah. Make sure you time warp it, too. That's Just right. really slow it down. Um, but, um, you know, honestly, it might be a good thing here for Classic that his Phoenix 
count got scouted that this is the tech because now you know it's he's not he has nothing to hide he's gonna be on the map with these phoenixes and he might get the scouting information that he needs seeing this third command center because you no know, classic if he was waiting at home for a potential widow mine drop or some other early harassment he might not be playing as greedy as he could and now he sees that third command center it's kind of a blank check for classic to be like okay you know i can throw down that third command that third nexus as it just now goes down I can yeah. also tech up, I can build this Immortal, I can get this Robotic Spay. No attacks are really going to come my way that quickly, especially with Innovation also powering up with an Engineering Bay. I mean, complete greed right now. It's going to be a slow game. Oh, oh, uh -oh. oh, hold on. Gotta I wonder put, if um, we might be having... On. I've got to put my I've got to put my my clothes on here. Yeah, I wonder if we I might be having... I normally cast um... naked. All right, we're back. <laughs> Whoa, that was fast. I was completely <laughs> naked like a minute ago. And it... I start putting all my stuff back Actually, on, trying miracle, to get ready to go. Yeah. I noticed this when you cast. You like to stand up a lot. You also like to take off the jacket a little bit. Yeah, well, I, I find every once in a while I just stand up and kind of, it, yeah, I don't know, it like changes my brain chemistry. I don't like to cast with this jacket on. Yeah, but I, I like to throw punches when I'm talking. You know, <laughs> just get uh, into it. I do a little shadow boxing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this uh, is one thing when we had the uh, offline format with the GSL, where if we had a situation like this with the pause, we can go like, you know, the cameras on the players, with, like yeah, the camera yeah. crew there. We would be able to take those wide studio shots, yeah. and you would have a little bit more time. But now you're speed running. Uh, and what you guys don't know is when the game starts, I take these chains off the wall, too. <laughs> <laughs> I put them on the ground. We actually we, 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 we play <laughs> war with the chains. I do, oh, oh, it's a pause. Oh, put the chains back up. Um, uh, yeah, it is another pause. Um, yeah. So they, they are chatting with the admin on Discord, so I'm not actually sure if this is probably another lag situation. Um, hopefully we don't have you know, yeah, a repeat of the previous time where we had to restart the PCs, but that might be the way this one goes. Is possible. You know, we are kind of working through the kinks of an online format as keep you in mind. Just, you know, these guys are... They're just tabbed out. He's like changing his music on Spotify right now. <laughs> it's like it's what I do when I'm paused. I'm like, I can't have this song. Hold on. Yeah. Um, All right. Okay. It looks like we're actually just be going we're right back into it back the game. In. So countdown they, they is underway. They might test it if it's laggy or, or, or not. Yeah. We'll see oh. if there's another pause coming in. Waiting for them to take our ugly mugs off the screen. All right. We're back into it. Is, okay. um, another thing to keep in mind is, you know, with this online format, we actually have these players playing on their home PCs. So it's not really, you know, the completely controlled environment on, you know, the, the try it and tested and true PCs that we had at the GSL studio. Right, yeah. These battle-tested tournament PCs. Legendary PCs that have seen hundreds, if not thousands, mm -hmm. of GSL matches. Yeah, man. Those PCs belong in museums. That's what Indiana Jones would say. <laughs> Absolutely. Um. <laughs> All so. right. So, Classic continuing to power up with Colossus. Thermal Lance also underway. Classic feeling confident enough with these two Phoenixes. I mean, scouting the greed here from Innovation. He knows that he can just ink out eke out every possible advantage, like one SCV, two SCVs. You, you take those wins when you can, especially against a player like Inno, who is so rock solid in his macro. And um, you know, I feel like this is going to be one of the more interesting games that we get into because you know, oftentimes in TVP, as we've seen throughout in this tournament, there's a lot of games that it feels like they just kind of end around the eight minute mark with the first big pressure coming in from Terran because Pros yeah. kind of has to navigate the storm perfectly to be able to survive, but actually it's going to be a bit of a role reversal, reversal here with Classic against Innovation. Classic going for the proxy gateway and potentially an attack here with one Colossus This seems Thermal like Lance. a very scrappy attack. Does this actually work? I think it's four force fields in total, so we have to see exactly how these ones go down. All right, two that. get just, dropped. Just dive on the sentries. He's like, wait a minute. <laughs> There's like nothing <laughs> over here. I can just come and attack you. Yep. Oh, no. That... Injured Sentry had to pull all the way back, which means that the Bio gets to stem forward. Able to pick off a couple more units there for Protoss, but Innovation going to have to retreat now that two Colossi are here. Keep in mind these Phoenixes are also entering the fray as this third command center getting lifted up. And you know, maybe if Innovation is playing the style a little bit in TVP, this might be one of the reasons why he's struggling because it's rare that we see Protoss really able to take the edge here with the aggression on yeah. three bases. Well, you know, it, the thing is, Innovation's style is so passive, it does seem like this is a pretty easy way to kind of set this up. Right, he's going to stim forward here. We have Guardian Shield. Yeah. Immediately and focuses down the Immortal. Some lifts going yeah. down on the Marauder. He's actually pretty significant here. That's a lot of firepower here for Terran getting lifted up. As the Colossi have not been touched. Yeah. So, like, this is, this is bad. And keep in mind, I mean, Innovation behind this, he isn't powering up with extra barracks. He's adding in a Ghost Academy. He's starting to build two Vikings. But two Vikings alone are not going to be enough here. He's going to try and stem forward. Does get one of those Colossi as the, 
the Marauder count continues to grow, oh, and so low. it's a really low CC there, Tegasilis. Looks like he is going to be able to repair that in time. He's going to get a few more Zealots and probably poke in again. Another Colossus entering the fray. Rejoining his buddy there. Ghost production has begun. Command Center I, getting repaired here. I think it's possible that he just breaks the Terran. Maybe. I, I think the innovation is starting to get the pieces together here, at least at the natural expansion, to hold on. But, you know, even if he can't kill him here, this is a big win for Classic. And he's not all in. He has plus one grand weapons underway. Charge is get, almost done. Yeah, he's going to get Archons. He's going to have a Disruptor. The Disruptor actually over at the Natural, that can do some work because there's not a lot of room to, like, run away. Yeah, exactly. So he can just chuck the, the, those shots in there. All right. This is the big bio force for innovation. He has amassed an army here that can actually contest this position yet again. Observer does spot this. This innovation starting to get the pieces together for Vikings. A lot more powerful than two. Suddenly this Colossi might go down over the course of an engagement as Classic might begin retreating back to home. You see him kind of posturing here in the middle of the map, not sure what to do. Okay, so the uh, the Protoss is just going to try to... Oh, 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 boy. oh, oh, the boys. I'm not sure if it's going to work this time, though. Okay, so compared to the game that we had against Bunny, it's seven Vikings as opposed to nine, so the Colossi are going to stay alive a little bit longer, and there should be two Disruptors, so... Yeah, the Disruptors, I think, can actually clean up where the Colossi maybe can't. Also, he sees the, the SCVs coming, so he has all this time. Yeah, let's see. All right, first Disruptor shot coming in. Complete whiff, in fact, as Innovation is able to kite away from that Colossi going down. Shield Battery is able to regenerate oh. it for a good amount of time. A lot of these SCVs falling here. Army numbers dwindling a little bit for innovation as Classic seems like he's getting the better end of this trade, but I, I think he might have done it, in fact, actually. I keep yeah, expecting I those Archons to go down. <laughs> Disruptor Shot actually hits a lot of Zealots there, but this Shield Battery is just doing complete work. GG. Yeah, GG Classic gets called. Classic takes game one. Yeah, and I mean, that time, the shield battery was in the right position. He was able to overcharge it. There were less Vikings, so the Colossi, even though there were only two of them, they stayed alive for a considerable amount of time. And then the Disruptors adding some extra AoE. They didn't get the best shots in, but even forcing the Terran player to have to kite away, that's time that the Terran isn't, you know, just focus firing down your key units, right? They're trying right. to micro back instead of forward. And um, some solid play there from Classic. Now, one game from advancing to the round of eight over Innovation. Very, very good game there from Classic. Innovation, look, we've seen him do that a lot. I feel like he he needs to be a little bit more on the initiative in some of these games. Like, he had his third CC all the way at the edge, so, like, it got scouted immediately. Mm -hmm. um, Classic clearly knows what to do. I mean, obviously, you can just make a pylon up there and warp in and just kind of push them off uh, if they land that CC too fast, and that's exactly what happened. Um so, I don't know. I mean, the thing about innovation, though, is he tends to do kind of the same stuff over and over again and, and do it very well. I guess you could go a third CC early and then just make SCVs and not land it right away. Maybe, um, but innovation, know. he just plays so greedy, and he kind of relies on his raw mechanical skill to actually be able to defend. The question yeah. is, you know, against a player like Classic, are you able to make that work? Because Classic had the perfect read on exactly what to do there. He didn't wait for charge to finish and hit a timing with that. Yeah. He didn't wait for any particular forge upgrades to finish and hit a timing. He's like, all right, the Colossi, that's my timing. I'm going to go in with slow zealots. I'm going to go in with four force fields. We're going to try and section off a small number of this bio and force a lift there on that third command center. And he almost killed it even. I mean, that was a ton of damage yeah. that came in. That basically forced Innovation's hand to try to go for an all-in, which did not work. Yeah, and, and it was all downhill from there. Um, so Innovation, uh, I think he has to play a little bit of a different game here. Uh, will we have a cheese from him? I, I don't think so. Um, Classic, I do think, has a, a pretty big range uh, of PVT styles. Yeah. Um, he was actually kind of playing like Innovation up until he found the, uh, the third CC. Then he went, oh, instant third Nexus, and... You know, let's get two Colossi and just start to push out. I feel like Classic, although he's generally more conservative, does have that wider array yeah, of game yeah. plans to go to. And especially in the mid game, he feels like one of the more flexible Protoss in terms of being able to mix things up as they're happening. Like, it was an almost instant reaction from him upon scouting innovation going for that third CC to be like, okay, Colossi, Thermal Lance, three sentries, let's go. I'm going to build this gateway there. I'm going to warp in all these extra units, and we're just going to hard commit with a small number of units. 
So uh, Classic up one to zero right now. We're gonna go to Ancient Cistern for map two and find out if Classic can win. And we're gonna have a Protoss in the round of eight or if Innovation is gonna tie this up one to one. I just noticed that graphic is biased. It's always showing the Terran logo. Oh, is that why we have That's so why. many Terran yeah. Innovation? I figured it out. Oh my God. It's the Illuminati. Oh. Were those Terran androids? <laughs> At the start of our show, <laughs> they, I thought they were. They, they look pretty human. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Classic. The yeah, Protoss android would actually look pretty cool. Now that I'm thinking about it, like it an would android zealot. It would look like a probe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. Yeah, we actually do already have some robots here. All right, we're gonna make a GoFundMe to to get a classic to have a room with things in it soon. Now maybe that crowdfunding continues to pile up, and yeah. Classic goes deep in this tournament. Maybe he will this be able to finally afford. On top of those hundreds of thousands of dollars, or some six hundred bucks, you can get the classic bookshelf in the room tier. <laughs> we start. I'm telling you, man, that yeah. should be a Patreon tier. Let's yeah. let's hire let's, let's hire let's... a interior designer. I think whenever you have a gaming room too, like I, I, all, all the players are playing. Like, look at their lights on. It's like they have like grocery store lights on <laughs> in their room. There is one thing about apartments in Korea generally where they have this like almost fluorescent LED hue. Yeah, I don't like which it. Which I don't like. I always have to set up my own. Yeah, you got to set up your own lights. See, yeah. now, this is this is we this this is off. We as, should be as in Americans. GSL. We should. Yeah, we got to start to train so we can play. <laughs> we'll get. The, well, you know, we'll have innovation at Classic Cast this, and we'll go there. Maybe in Stormgate. We'll decorate the rooms. The games won't be as good, and Someday. you're gonna beat me, but <laughs> the room will look better. <laughs> um. Uh, all right. So. Kind of cookie cutter openings again here on PPT. I mean, Classic going for the 20 Nexus, pilot on the low ground here, Cybernetic Core behind it, Innovation going for Reaper into a factory. So the, the big shakeup here that's a little bit different from what you would expect in a meta TVP is that Innovation's not going for the Reaper expand. He's instead delaying that expansion a little bit with his factory. And you know, maybe this is him mixing it up a bit from that first game where the three the three CC greed just did not work. I mean, yeah, he tried to be a greedy Gabriel, and it did not <laughs> did not go his way. Tasteless. It did not. So um, let's see what uh, innovation is going to show us this time around. I mean, generally speaking, I'm sure most of us have been watching long enough to know innovation, but you know, some people are new to this still. Innovation is basically a, a guy who just has really good macro builds. He likes to yeah. push. He never misses depots. Uh, there's never a moment that the, the lights at the barracks are not on. Yeah, um, he's just very good at controlling and, and pushing. He has, um, you know, a, a very um, sharp uh, approach to the game. But the problem is, is like, he's probably one of the most predictable players in GSL. Um, I would say so. And you know, it, when he's on, he looks great. But you know, we do see a lot of players try to play around him, and we saw exactly that happen in that last game where he saw. Okay, you're not, you know, you're going to take a third CC that fast and land it. All right, well, then I'm going to punish you. Starting it up again? Sorry. And the, no, no, you're fine. <clears throat> and, the, and the truth is, is like innovation hasn't, you know, he hasn't, he's, hasn't been playing as, as of late. But you got to wonder in this modern era, you know, how effective is this style going to be? I mean, people are so good now. I think it's not, I mean, it's certainly not trendy. I don't know if that's on merit of it not being quite as good as it used to be, but it does it does feel weaker with the current yeah. tempo of Legacy of the Void, especially with you know how fast players are expanding now. I do think that there should be room to get greed checked by the Protosses. <laughs> Once again, this is the same the same Phoenix yeah. and Reaper. The Reaper's like, please, I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> All right, so innovation with a kind of quirky two Reaper opening here wasn't able to get much damage done, but. All right, Reactor on the factory. Hellions coming out, four Hellions in total, and there isn't as much Phoenix energy. Classic will be able to spot this now in three adepts with their bonus damage to light. We'll be able to oh. focus fire these down quite quickly. No shield battery here, so there no should pickups. be. I'll line them up a little bit there. Six probes going down, no, no more lifts, I, so this hurts a lot actually here for Classic. This I'm, did way more damage than I thought. Dude, is Innovation, is he like a five-head gamer? Was that him sending in the two Reapers knowing that, you know, think, Classic I is think, probably... Actually, yeah, I think he might have. Classic is probably yeah. going to lift one up again and then not have the lifts, because imagine that push comes in again. We have one less Hellion getting into the main base and firing there. Suddenly, there's a lot less AOE damage. Maybe three or four less probes go down. There's a lot of Adepts coming across the map here. I mean, innovation though with a bunker and a cyclone. This could be a nice defense for him. I think he might even have a second. Yeah, he's second cyclone almost done in production. So, 
Oh, oh, oh please get that up. Oh my god. All right, I'm not sure. I don't think this is intentional here. I think this might be a mistake here oh, by Innovation sure. with these Adepts getting into the main base. Is Classic now delivering some counter damage. Four SCVs going down so far, Tasteless. We'll see if he gets more. Cyclone's doing a good job. He does uh, shade these over here, starts to take out some Marines. The Phoenix is going to get some more worker kills as well. Uh, it's just been a bit of a tit for tat, a bit of a back and forth here. Now we're going to have some auto turrets chucked in here. Some this tit is, for tat for tit. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is just so action packed, this game right now. I mean, both these players, they just hate probes and SCVs, man. What more it's is crazy. there to say? Another auto turret going to get dropped here. I think it will get that sentry. Oh, oh barely. Barely didn't get out of range. As that is four more SCVs going down. And I mean, really, both players just trading blows here. Innovation going for that third CC. And you know, at the end of the day, we had a lot of units change hands, as you see right there, almost even. Innovation getting a slightly better trade. Six more probes going down compared to, uh, I think it was 13 probes and seven SCVs. And yeah. a slight resource overall advantage for, for him in terms of trading. And you know, we'll see if he's able to ride that momentum, but it doesn't feel like anyone's really run away with the game just yet, which is surprising considering how crazy it's been. Okay, so uh, he's going to start to push in over here. And it's kind of a, a, a flimsy Protoss army here. I mean, there's not quite the, the normal, you know, kind of meat and, and, and bones that you, you have that, that can allow, like, for instance, for the Immortal to be covered. We don't have enough Sockers. We don't have enough Zealots. Yeah, Byun played Protoss. This is what his armies would look like. Yeah, man. yeah. It's, it's like a ragtag group of fours. It's like a D&D &D campaign. It's like, okay, let's get one Immortal. Yeah, let's get one like Adept. Final Fantasy squad, like, moving out. <laughs> He's going to come across the map now and attack again. And, uh oh, you know, it's it could be a lot of the same ideas that we saw in game one, right? Where it's like he knows he might be able to take a fight over where this uh, command center is going to land. Yeah, it's scary, I though. I don't see medevacs here, by the way. No, I don't think there's no there's no medevacs on the field and a reactor actually being built by that starport. So we won't have medevacs for at least another minute or so. And that might be Classic's window, but I mean, the army for him is just so flimsy. And yeah, on the middle of the map, you can see him just starting to retreat now as he picks up a couple more SCVs. And it's kind of a bummer here for Classic because you feel like with that Colossus and with Innovation really just having pure Marine and two Cyclones, that's the time that you want to attack in, just get max value out of those laser beams. But the way it's gone, I mean, the army, as you said, it's it's just too flimsy. There isn't really a window because there isn't the support for the Colossus there to get in. And <laughs> <laughs> it's a cheeky little lift. Yeah. Um, okay. Fun game. Yeah, this has been a really good one. Uh, but I do think that Protoss is going to have a, a moment coming up here to attack. In fact, that moment could be now. I think he just needed to have like a little bit more underneath the Colossus. A little bit more bulk as Thermal Ant should be done with the second Colossus. Yeah, we see our Observer now highlighting it. And, oh, that's a nice catch. They're picking up one of these Cyclones. Yeah, should just get rid of that so you can't have any fancy targets. Two Medivacs are now here. Uh, the Marines do have Stim, but, you know. Oh, hold on. He's going to run. Yeah, I think he sees the two Vikings, two Medivacs, and yeah. all of that bio. This is actually, oh, this is why we didn't have any Medivacs. Innovation was powering up to go to Starport. So he's kind of mind gaming oh, this a little wow. bit. He's okay. playing classic. Classic loves to play this Colossus style early with at least two, oftentimes three, before transitioning out. And this might be the kind of situation where innovation just gets so many Vikings, maybe even double digit Vikings, just pushes across the map. He doesn't care about the Stalkers. He doesn't care about yeah. the Phoenixes. Kill the Colossi. And if classic doesn't have other AOE damage prepared, he might just be able to win the game off a big push. You know, if he doesn't scout this, yeah, he's going to get very, very much so hard counter here. I, but I think you got to start to see this number of Vikings and be yeah. like, wait a minute, that's a lot. I think he should be catching one of it. But, I mean, look at this Protoss if, army. It is so colossal. If you so to, 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 to Zealot uh, Archon, though, right? I mean, you're going to be fine. I don't know. I feel like the gateway count isn't high enough, considering the bio ball. He's got it. He's going for two disruptors. Yeah, this, this is, is what you play. need. This is absolutely what you need here is Classic. And even then, it is a scary situation with the bio ball as large as it is. But you know, Classic, if he's able to get that disruptor count up to four, he should be able to stabilize unless Innovation's truly able to pick him apart. But this is kind of the game that Innovation wants to, wants to play. He wants to be ahead in supply. He wants to have this big army macro it out, continue to expand, now throwing down this fourth command center and just pick, Terran, pick Protoss apart. I mean, this was his bread and butter for years before going to the military service. So you got to think he's going to be comfortable here in this position. 
Okay, scan over here. Taryn is itching for a fight. Uh, the two disruptors are going to be ready. So the idea is that he has so many Vikings, he just obliterates the Colossi before they really get to play any kind of a role here. Um, there is a little uh, warp in happening over here. I think he's going to send like 15 zealots in over here. Or well, not that, it's the number of zealots in the game, but <laughs> send that in there and then probably fly into the main. Terran just has enough, a really nice rally point in over here. Yeah, innovation reading that correctly, but not in time. Not prepared for this drop here in the main base. He's trying to find a window here. Cyclone wanting to lock on to that disruptor to find more damage and you know, these one drops zealous are, trapped behind the ebay it's so these fun. drops are getting a lot of damage and oh innovation his army is split disruptor shot coming in let's see if it connects four marines i think going down but behind this 20 scvs innovation he's falling apart back at home tasteless yeah i think he didn't appreciate how many zealots could be warped in here um and now this is starting to really stack and the infantry is going to go all the way back home which oh, i can no. imagine that it, this means that now the protoss army can actually follow this is a disastrous situation here for innovation just not enough units back at home to stem the tide of zealots warping in and classic now killing 40 scvs 41 scvs in fact as Classic just taking a massive supply lead now, even confident enough to move into the middle of the map as it feels like that one Warp Prism drop completely turned this game on its head. Yeah, this is now really starting to add up. We have 35 SCVs in this game, and there are eight Disruptors. Eight Disruptors, Tasteless. That's so many Disruptors. That actually has to be probably too many Disruptors. <laughs> You could never like, have too many Disruptors tasteless. There's no such thing. You want an army of only Disruptors. I mean, Classic is almost maxed, and this is the kind of situation where Innovation has to attack into him. So Disruptor yeah. is one of the best units you can have in this specific spot because Innovation took so much economic damage. Well, uh, he's going to try to come down now, and uh, so many Disruptors here. Here we go. Big attack in here. Yeah, first shot whips a little bit. Second one a little bit better, I think. He's going to be catch. running from disruptor shots like forever. At this He's rate. in the corner. Oh. Nowhere to run anymore, Tasteless. More disruptor shots coming in. Disruptor's actually getting into melee range as GG. the army just overpowering there for Classic. That one warp prism doing so much work. And we will have a Protoss survive to we go to the Rat of Eight. We, we did, did it. it. Everybody. Yes. Protoss <laughs> in the round of eight. Thank God. And look, Classic. He's our guy right now. Okay? He's our guy. He played very well. Uh, I hope he can get to the round of four. Maybe we will still have a, a balanced round of four. Maybe it's going to be like um, a Zerg, a Protoss, and two Terrans. That would be cool to see. But what a relief. Uh, Classic does it. He, he, he played an excellent game against uh, Innovation. You could see eventually Innovation got far enough along. Um, there was nothing you can do against that many disruptors like that. Yeah, and that Warp Prism just getting so much damage done. Classic yeah. with a killer instinct. And I'm excited to see him advance just because he's been really trying to, you know, get back on the path to success here. Yeah. And Legacy of the Void since returning from military service. And Innovation, I mean, he's doing really well, too. I mean, we got to give him props. He's only been he playing played for well. two months. Yeah. And that was a solid performance. He I almost think qualified. He needs to try to kill the, the Protoss a little bit sooner yeah. here. I think he's... he's Protoss do have these brittle moments. So you, you want to try to get in there and do some damage. I think he's kind of too withdrawn in the game. Anyways, yeah. the hero of the Protoss race and the only Protoss. Congratulations. How do you feel, Classic? So after coming back from the military, I always got eliminated so fast in the GSL. I really wanted to make it to the next round. And I'll tell you what, I'm very happy I, I did that today. So the first game I lost, um, I was worried in my elimination match, I might just be the first to be knocked out. But I can tell you right now, I'm very relieved that I actually did make it to the quarterfinals. I guess today's series was uh, going to be very tough. Uh, that match you had against Innovation, it seemed like that started to go very well for you. Innovation just got out of the military. I had this mindset that it would be unacceptable if I lost to Innovation today. But I was actually very surprised. His condition seems pretty good. But I could also feel in the games like his hands weren't that warmed up yet. He wasn't as nimble as he normally is. Uh, you didn't really use disruptors early on, but later on you incorporated that. 
Why were you so disruptor heavy? Um, now, so after the match against Bunny, I realized that I probably have to try to uh, add this in to my kit and the result speaks for itself itself later game disruptors is good so you're the last protoss and you were in the decider match how does it feel to know that you're the last protoss do you feel pressure or are you going to enjoy this i'm enjoying this right now this is fun i like being in the spotlight you know i like being the only protoss and i'm going to do it uh and i uh, hope you guys cheer for me so you've got a lot of fans around the world anything you want to say to them I helped to make it to the quarterfinals. It took me a long time. I'm very happy to be here now. <laughs> now that I've made it this far, I'm going to practice really hard. I'm going to show some great games. So please keep your eyes on me uh, and keep supporting me. All right, that does right. it for the interview. Good. What a great ending for the day. I was so worried Innovation was going to win. Look, let's face it, even Innovation's mom and dad want that Protoss to move on <laughs> to, the, <laughs> to the final. Yeah. Eight, so. Overall, a lot of fun games today. I mean, we yeah. had a lot of 2 0s, but the games were interesting. They were action packed, uh, and it was a pleasure. As we look at our round of 16, Maru, Cure, Dark, Bunny, all advancing first, and then Gun Silver, Gumiho Classic. Yeah. And so that's not the groups, right? No, this is first oh, no, that's place just who's second moved on. Okay, yeah, I got confused for yeah. a second there. So um, we're going to be going to a group format uh, next week into the round of eight, and it will be, I think the official groups are going to release after the broadcast, but it should be, you know, seated based on results here in the round of 16, yeah. first and second, first and second. Yeah, we'll see if they have a graphic for us for that. If not, uh, it's coming soon, um, and we're going to be back. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we're going to be back. Um, Tuesday, Thursday, 6.30 p.m. KST. Don't forget, not next week, but the week after that on Thursday, uh, we do have studio audiences for the, the show itself. Oh, I cannot wait, Tasteless. It'll be so back to be, gonna be in so the GSL nice. studio. We miss you guys. It's, I like seeing the, the people that come to the studio. Oh, and, it's so much know. fun. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a cough today. Um, But, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad we had a Protoss make it. Uh, we definitely have enough Terrans here. I do think as we go through the round of eight, we're probably going to see those Terrans thin out quite a bit. Yeah, I, w I would love to have a rounded top four with yes, uh, either two, ter two Terrans or two Zergs and, um, you know, one of each other race. Just would hope be really the creator nice. can, can, can do it, or um, Classic can do it. Yeah. Um, also, do be sure to check out the ESL's, uh, ESL, excuse me, SC2 Masters Summer 2023 Regionals. I feel like we're all discovering in real time that I can't read. <laughs> I'm trying to do this. I'm like, oh, no, reading. I haven't done that since I was in school. Uh, do check that out. There's going to be more StarCraft action for you guys. Should be going on from May 2nd to the <laughs> May 21st, and should be a lot of fun. I'm yeah. curious to see uh, how Protoss has performed in the ESL circuit, honestly, yeah. this year, because considering it's been kind of a dim We're having a hard time right now. Um, I know you guys thought Protoss was OP, but it's not looking like it right now. Mm. Uh, they need some more wins for sure. Yeah, hopefully we'll see more of that in the round of uh, round of eight. And yeah, it's been a pleasure casting round of sixteen with you, Tasis. Yeah, it's been I a lot of fun. I cannot wait as we continue on the path to having a live finals again. Please, I cannot wait. <sighs> um, but do join us online for Tuesday and Thursday as we continue to do GSL. And uh, on the final day, it's going to be the final four and then the finals. So it's going to be action probably two best of fives, then a best of seven to close it out. It's going to be a long and epic evening. Uh, you want to be there for sure. It'll be a lot of fun, man. And uh, that's all the time we have, guys. We will see you uh, again next week. We love you. Take care. Bye-bye.